Welcome to Sammy J's Audiobooks channel. Your go-to plug for all genres of Sammy J novels audio narrations that will keep you yearning for more. Please subscribe and turn on post notification to get alerts on all new audiobooks upload. The Fling A steamy romance novel by Sammy J narrated by Sylvia Watts. Chapter 1 It was my fourth pizza of the week. The doorbell rang two minutes early. I checked my reflection in the hallway mirror, smoothed my hair, and adjusted my shirt. Drawing in a deep breath, I shook out my shoulders, trying to relax. It better be Tarek with my pizza. On Tuesday, Paulo himself brought the delivery, but I didn't order from Paulo's for Paulo. I yanked open the door and almost wept in relief when glittering dark eyes and a sensual smile met mine. Hello, Tarek said. He had a beautiful voice, smooth, husky, with an accent I couldn't place. Sort of British, with a touch of something more fitting with his black hair and olive skin. I smiled back, aiming for friendly with a hint of flirtatious and sexy. I probably hit closer to weirdo stalker, but as a social work grad student, the men I interacted with were either the handful of older married men in the program or the drug addicts I worked with at my internship. It was only natural I had a crush on the delivery guy. And seriously, he was drop dead gorgeous. Come on in. I held open the door for him. I'll get my wallet. He brushed past me as he stepped into my apartment. Was it just me? Or did he deliberately step closer to me than necessary? You need to take some cooking lessons. His eyes twinkled as he teased me. This stuff is no good for you. I returned his teasing look. Not pushing the pizza diet? So you're saying this isn't a career move for you? You're not looking to take over for Paulo? I nodded at the box he balanced on one hand. Now, paying the bills until I get back to school. School? I hadn't given it much thought. Most of my thoughts of Tarek were in the hot and sweaty category. But I hadn't pegged him as a college boy. He didn't have that student air about him. He seemed more mature. I laughed at myself in my head. Yeah, because I knew so much about him from the six pizzas he delivered. Still, in one sentence, he'd upgraded from hot fantasy material a potentially interesting person. It was an impressive sentence. What are you studying? I asked as I dug in my tote bag. My hand found my Batgirl wallet almost immediately, but I pretended to keep digging. I wanted another minute. Architecture? I have another year left on my master's. I tried to keep my surprise from showing. Not what I expected from Fantasy Pizza Boy. Fantasy guys were supposed to remain anonymous and uninteresting. They were supposed to be nothing more than pretty faces. It was time to move on from Tariq. He was real now. I didn't have time for real. Yet, I couldn't stop myself from brushing my fingers over his as I gave him the cash. I knew from last time, his skin was soft and warm. He met my gaze and let his own fingers linger a second too long. His smile was gone, but amusement danced in his dark eyes. We stared at each other. The hallway seemed to shrink around us, or we grew. There suddenly wasn't as much space as there'd been only a moment ago. Silence stretched between us, alive, almost electric. When I couldn't stand another second without either jumping him or crawling out of my skin... I blurted out, so I'll probably see you tomorrow. His smile returned, the left side of his mouth curling as he eyed the large pizza now in my hands. Tomorrow? I'm working on a paper all weekend. I jiggle the box. Brain food. He opened the door, then looked back at me. I'm off tomorrow, but if you still need brain food Saturday, let us know. My laugh sounded pathetic as I thanked him and shut the door. I took the box to the kitchen and set it on the counter. 
After days of pizza for lunch and dinner, I didn't really want it, but I needed to eat. And Paolo did make a hell of a pie. You're an idiot, Becca, I muttered as I pulled out a plate. If I kept this up, I'd need another student loan to cover my pizza budget. It was time to forget the delivery boy. No matter how tall, dark, and sexy he was. I'm seeing double. Beautiful, delicious double. I followed my friend Grace's gaze across the crowded bar. She'd shown up at my apartment and harassed me until I agreed to a study break. Even insane workaholics need study breaks on Friday night, Rebecca. When she used my full name, I did what she said. My eyes nearly fell out of my head when they landed on Tarek. And Tarek sitting next to him. The hell? Two Tareks? Say what now? Grace fingered the stem on her cherry. If she tried to tie it in a knot with her tongue to impress the Tareks, I would die. That's Tarek. Or one of them is, I guess. You know them? One of them. Tarek had a twin? An identical twin? That was the only explanation. That or my soda had been secretly enhanced. Holy crap. They were the male Doubleman twins. My Batgirl shirt suddenly felt too warm and completely unsexy. In my extreme lameness, I always put on a cute top, usually a strappy tank when I ordered pizza. But I hadn't seen a reason to change just to go out with Grace. She was on the prowl anyway and just needed me as her wing woman. I'd only intended to stay for an hour. And gosh, look at the time. I should get going. A hot guy was one thing, but I didn't date. And talking to Tarek for more than three minutes would be way too tempting. Grace gave me a cool look. Are you kidding me? You know that. She pointed at Tarek and his presumed twin. You are not banging that. So there's no way in hell you're leaving without introducing me to that. Okay, first, he's not a that. He's Tarek. Just because I'd spent the last two weeks objectifying him didn't mean she could. He was a borderline real person now. All the more reason to go back to my homework cave. How do you know him? And why in hell do you want to leave instead of jumping him? She stared at me with the kind of blunt, no bullshit expression I could never pull off. He delivers for Paulo's. I shrugged like it was no big deal. Like I hadn't eaten a lifetime supply of pizza since the first time he showed up on my doorstep. Grace turned her attention back to the guys. I might have to increase my pizza consumption. Something that felt suspiciously like jealousy flared in my gut. I glanced over at Tarek. As if he felt my eyes on him, he looked up. The air around me stopped, and the noise faded to the background as one side of his mouth curled into a half-smile. The flare in my gut turned hot and hungry. For long, breathless moments, we looked at each other. It was probably my imagination, but I could have sworn something flashed in his eyes. Then the other side of his mouth curled, and he lifted his beer bottle and tipped it at me. Grace grabbed my arm. You're definitely not leaving. She pulled me with as she headed for Tarek and his brother. I probably could have stopped her if I'd really tried, but I didn't. That one smile warmed me better than hot chocolate after hours on a ski hill ever could. He didn't take his gaze off me as we approached their table. His brother seemingly lost in another realm, jerked to attention, as if Tarek had kicked him. What's the hell, he said. We were close enough that I could hear he had the same rolling accent as Tarek. Best I could figure, it was Middle Eastern, but that was more a deduction based on his name and looks and the way he pronounced his the as a za. Tarek's eyes didn't waver from my face. 
the intensity might have been unsettling if it weren't so sexy. Becca. Hi. Yep, I was a conversational genius. Do not mention pizza. This is my brother, Cam. Cam nodded. Hello. Up close, I could see subtle differences between them. Tara kept his hair shorter and had faint smile lines around his eyes. Cam seemed more serious, almost brooding. I'm Grace. She gave Cam a cool smile and sat next to him. He raised an eyebrow as he took a drink of his beer. Tarek flashed an annoyed glance at his brother, then brought his attention back to me. I thought you were working tonight. Everyone needs a break, and Becca works too much. So how do you two know each other? Grace ran an assessing gaze over Cam. She did like the brooding type. She'd angled her chair toward him, along with her shoulders. I deliver for Apollos. Tarek smiled at me. Becca is one of our best customers. Oh, really? Grace smirked at me. She's usually more of a burger and fries girl. Cam shot an annoyed look at Tarek, then turned it to me. I struggled not to squirm under his scrutiny. They had the same deep, dark eyes, but Cam's were harder. They lacked the spark of humor that Tarek's usually held. Abruptly, Cam stood. He wrapped his hand around Grace's arm and pulled her to her feet. Let's dance. They can talk. Instead of looking at Grace, his eyes flaked from Tarek to me, then back to Tarek. Grace didn't protest as Cam led her to the small dance floor at the back of the bar. She even tossed a wink over her shoulder. Sorry about my brother, Tarek said. He's not very subtle. Neither is she. Not that he's wrong. I would rather talk to you. Well, then. He was watching me again, in that way he had that made me feel like we were completely alone in the crowded bar. I never thought much of it when he was delivering pizza, because we were completely alone then. But tonight, the effect was much more pronounced. We watched each other for another long moment, the air between us heavy with possibility. Finally, I couldn't take the tension, so I took a drink of my soda. It did little to wet my suddenly too dry mouth. I thought you were studying all weekend and stocking up on brain food. Again, his lip curled. Man, I loved his half smile. Paired with his twinkling eyes, it was hypnotic and really damn sexy. I almost regretted my decision to avoid dating. I might not have time for a real relationship with a real guy, but there was always room for delicious flirtation. Maybe I could even make an exception for a hot fling. I'm writing a paper. But Grace convinced me I needed to get out for a few hours. I took the last swallow of my drink. A few minutes ago, I'd told myself I'd leave after this drink. But now... Can I buy you another one? He inclined his head toward my empty glass. Yes, please. Better yet, take me home and ravish me. I should get going. I let the regret hang in my voice. I wasn't much smoother than Grace or Cam, but I could at least throw a few crumbs. You're really going to work at nine on a Friday night. He leaned toward me, his knee brushing mine under the table. Tingles wandered up my leg. Somehow, without my noticing, he got him closer. His chair hadn't moved, but his body was firmly in my space. More tingles skittered down my spine. I know it makes me horrifically boring, but this is 40% of my grade. I have to do well if I want to pass my program. He probably thought I was a loser. Who did homework on a Friday night? He stood and held his hand out to me. Then we better dance before I miss my chance. I looked at his hand then up to his face. Dance? My body flushed. 
touching him? Pressing close to his body? Yes, please. It was one dance. Nothing else had to come of it. He grinned, dark eyes glittering. I returned his smile and took his hand. It was warm and smooth and sent electricity up my arm as we headed for the dance floor. How was he so smooth when I was so not? He'd segued that conversation perfectly. I would have tripped awkwardly over my words. He looped his arm loosely around my back and started swaying in time to the music. My hand settled on his waist. I could feel the solid muscle there. Unfortunately, rather than letting myself enjoy the sensation of touching him, I had to focus on my feet. I was not a dancer. The not quite slow, not quite fast rhythm of the song was impossible for someone as unskilled as I. I was about to excuse myself and settle for ordering another 7 million pizzas in the next month when the song changed to a slow one. Wonderful Tonight by Eric Clapton filled the room. His arm immediately tightened, drawing me against his chest. We lined up perfectly, and when I looked up at him, my breath caught. The dance floor lighting was even dimmer than the rest of the bar. His dark eyes looked like two black seas, the whites glowing with intensity. A hint of a smile tipped the corners of his lips. His gaze held mine as he pulled our joined hands to his chest. I could feel his heart's steady rhythm under my palm. Impossibly calm. How was his not pounding like mine? Not fair. I could barely breathe with him this near. He finally broke eye contact and lowered his head. Not a dancer? His words flowed over my ears, hot and arousing. He could read an ingredients list and it would arouse me. This is okay. I can do the slow songs. My hair moved like he'd used his nose to move it out of his way. Yes, you can. His mouth brushed the sensitive skin behind my ear and I shuddered which meant my whole body rubbed against his. We both sucked in our breaths. His arousal surged against my hip, sending a thrill through me. Until that moment, I hadn't known if this was anything more than lighthearted flirtation for him. He cleared his throat, but didn't pull back from me, the way some guys would. So, this time... It was me who had the smile playing with the edges of my lips. It was nice to have someone else flustered for a change. So? What are you studying? Safe subjects. Okay, I could play safe. I'm getting my master's in social work. If all goes well, I'll graduate in a few weeks. Congratulations. He kept his mouth near my ear presumably to be heard over the music. Possibly so every word was a tease. I was aware of him everywhere. Everywhere we touched, his cheek on my temple, his thigh brushing mine, his thumb tracing a line back and forth on my hip, and everywhere we didn't, which was pretty much only our ankles and my right elbow. But I still felt him there. Everything in me stretched toward him. Will you work with children? His arms slid further around my waist, pulling me even closer. Our conversation seemed so normal, so mundane. But there was major subtext going on. Delicious subtext. Actually, I've been doing my internship at a center for patients with dual diagnosis and I have a job starting with them after graduation. Which is nice, since I already have established patients and know the staff, and sorry, I'm babbling. I couldn't have a focused conversation with his body pressed to mine. He even smelled good, 
like exotic spices and earthy man. I don't mind. I could hear the amusement in his voice. His general good humor was as attractive as the rest of him. I knew I took life too seriously. It was good for me to be around people who found the light side of things. From my back pocket, the Jaws theme started to play, barely audible over the music. Of course my dad was calling on a Friday night. Like employers with their random drug tests, my dad liked to do random social life checks. Make sure I was out becoming an alcoholic. You need to get that? Tarek asked. No, it's just my dad. He would call back every half hour until I answered. But I wasn't interrupting this moment with Tarek. He quirked an eyebrow, then said, That's great you already have a job. But I'm not sure what dual diagnosis is. Definitely not the lighter side of things. People with both mental health diagnosis and substance abuse problems, usually because they try to self-medicate. Ah, that cannot be an easy job. He had no idea. Sometimes I thought I deserved my own mental health diagnosis for pursuing it as a career. But I couldn't think of anything else I'd want to do. I've been on this path since I was 11. It can get tough. But then you get a success, and it's all worth it. The familiar lumpy ache settled in my chest, a reminder of all the failures. One particular failure. As if cued by my memory, my phone dinged, signaling a text message. Most likely Dad. He disliked voicemail. Tarek pulled back so he could look at me. The smile he gave me was warm and inviting, with no hint of his usual teasing. I wanted to crawl inside that smile, stay forever with the feelings it stirred in me. I didn't know what they were, but they were as warm and inviting as the smile. They chased away the ache, which was wonderful and dangerous. Very admirable. His voice slid over me, a caress as warm as his smile. I guess. I didn't do it to be admirable. Like most people, I was much more selfish in my motives. But I didn't want to have that conversation. Not when the warmth in his eyes was getting hotter. Still looking into my eyes, he moved his face closer, resting his forehead against mine. Normally, I would have shied away from so much intense eye contact. But something about Tarek made it comfortable even when it felt like he could see inside me. I slid my palm up his back, feeling the strength of his muscles under his green t-shirt. He let out a small sound of approval. Of their own doing, my lips parted. I needed him to kiss me more than I needed air. This was crazy. This wasn't me. His hand came up stroking my cheek as he tucked a strand of hair behind my ear. His fingers stopped under my chin, tilting me to him. You are so... Hey, so I'm heading out. In the back of my mind, I heard the swooping sound of an airplane taking a nosedive, then crashing and exploding. I closed my eyes and dropped my head onto Tarek's chest. I felt rather than heard his chuckle. After holding my breath for a count of five, I looked up at Grace. What? Oh, sorry. She shot a look at Tarek, who still held me close, then back to me. I'm heading out. Can he walk you home? I bit back a snotty remark about how she'd been the one to drag me out in the first place, and it wasn't very nice to ditch me. She wasn't usually this obvious, but snapping at her wouldn't accomplish anything. Besides... I was hardly going to complain about more time alone with Tarek. So I looked at him with a questioning expression. He looked around the room. Then his gaze came back to me. Cam seems to have disappeared, so I guess I don't have to clear it with him. I would love to walk you home. Grace flashed a brilliant smile. Thanks. I'll call you, she promised as she wove through the crowd. 
The slow song had ended. The speakers now blasting a pounding rhythm I had no idea how to dance to. But Tarek's arm stayed firmly around my waist, so I made no move to let go of him. Except... I should probably get going, too. Damn, my father for getting into my head. I'm not gonna get any writing done tonight, but I should go to bed soon. My cheeks heated when I realized the implication of my word choice. That half-smile was back. Clearly, he'd noticed, too. I would hate to keep you from bed. He dropped his arms and stepped away from me. I tried not to whimper at the loss of his body heat. I didn't mean... Never mind. He grinned, then started for the door. The crowd was so thick, I worried I'd lose him. Plus, his hungry looks had emboldened me. So I grabbed his waist as I followed him through the press of bodies. He covered my hand with his. Once outside, he laced our fingers together and I walked as close to him as I could without tripping over his feet. The night was warm, a light breeze, refreshing after the thick, stifling air in the bar. So, Batman, he said as we walked. I whimpered internally. Here it came. He was going to make fun of my geeky tendencies. Yup, big van. Although this is actually Batgirl. I made a vague gesture at my shirt. I always thought she was much hotter than Catwoman. And I spent two years convinced I could be Batman when I grew up. Cam likes to use that to embarrass me, but it doesn't really work. He grinned. Who would not want all those cool gadgets? My inner geek girl swooned. I had a crush on Batman when I was a kid. I actually dated a guy named Bruce in high school solely for his name. Tarek laughed. That is impressive. Did I tell him about my tattoo? I had a gold bat symbol on my right hip. Or did I wait and see if I ever got an opportunity for him to unwrap it for himself? So, tomorrow, he said before I could decide. We'd reached my building. He didn't let go of my hand as I pushed through the main door to the lobby. I have to work all day. This paper is important. I could get a C on the paper and still pass, but that wasn't good enough. I couldn't just pass. My dad's image flashed in my head. Damn it, go away. Don't order a pizza tomorrow night. He tugged on my arm, so I turned to face him. We'd reached my door, so we stopped. He took a step closer into my space. He was clearly interested in me, yet... Why not? A girl's gotta eat. Never mind, I had at least two pies worth of leftovers in my fridge. I'm sure you could feed a rugby team with the leftovers you must have. His mouth stayed flat, but his eyes danced. I tried not to blush. I failed. Besides, for the second time... He brushed my hair out of my face. I shivered as his fingers grazed my cheek. A girl should eat better than Paulo's every meal. What did you have in mind? Take me out, I mentally begged. Wine and dine me, then bring me home and have your wicked way with me. What the hell was I thinking? I didn't go out, I didn't get dined, and certainly not wined. I work until seven. Then I'll come over and make you dinner. He took another small step, closing the distance between our bodies. I was so distracted by his nearness, by the tingle shooting through me, that it took me a moment to realize a man had offered to cook for me. If that's okay, he added quickly. A startled laugh escaped my mouth. Of course it's okay. I'd love to have you cook me dinner. It wasn't going out. I could make a dining exception. He smiled. Again, the warm smile I felt all the way to my toes, which were curling inside my Wonder Woman socks. I could make a lot of exceptions if he kept smiling at me like that. Like last time, his smile shifted, the look in his eyes growing hungry. 
I put my hand on his chest for balance and was surprised to feel his heart beating out a rapid beat. He'd been so calm when we danced. We looked at each other for a moment that hung between us, heavy with possibility. It seemed to stretch endlessly. Then, eyes still open, he cupped the back of my head and tilted my face to his. His lips brushed mine, a whisper of a kiss that jolted through me like lightning. My fingers curled into his shirt, anchoring me so I didn't float away. Becca, he murmured, then gave me another breath of a kiss. I wanted more, so much more. My lips parted, inviting him in. He nibbled my lower lip, slid another soft kiss to the edge of my mouth, then slowly drew back. Resting his forehead against mine, his thumb swept down my cheek and over my lips where his mouth had been. His chest rose and fell rapidly under my hand. I opened my eyes, just enough to peek through my lashes. As I watched, his eyelids lifted. Humor and hunger danced in his dark eyes. A slow smile turned up his mouth. Powerless to do anything but watch, I stood there as he withdrew his body from mine. I longed to grab him and pull him into my apartment with me. Instead, I leaned on my door and shoved my free hand in my pocket. He held onto my other hand until the last second. After a gentle squeeze, he let it go. Sleep well. One final scorching smile, and he was gone. Chapter 2 By 6.30, I had my paper done. I had a better understanding of how the Affordable Care Act affected people with substance abuse problems than probably most members of Congress. Tomorrow, I would revise and edit the paper to within an inch of its life. But for tonight, I could close my laptop and do my best to not think about it. Normally, that would have been impossible with an assignment this big. But Tarek was a worthy distraction. Provided my dad didn't call again. I'd ignored all of his calls today, but he'd sent numerous texts reminding me that I needed an A on the paper to get honors. I told him multiple times that my graduate program didn't have honors, but he refused to accept it. Reality was rarely a deterrent for my dad's opinions. Willing myself not to think about him for the rest of the night, I jumped in the shower and let myself relive Tarek's kiss yet again as I ran my favorite chocolate-scented body wash over my skin. As much as I'd craved a wild, passionate kiss, I couldn't deny that his kiss had been perfect, sweet, tender, yet scorching, enough to give me a hint of his warm, spicy taste, and fleeting enough to have me longing for more. He was good. I spent far too long trying to pick my undergarments. I wasn't certain he'd get to see them, but I knew I sure as hell wanted him to, briefly, before he ripped them off me. Did I wear the matching purple satin and lace bra and panty set? Or did I go for something more cheeky and wear my black cotton panties with the glittery pink Batgirl symbol and the matching bra? I always thought she was way hotter than Catwoman. Batgirl it was. I pulled on my sexiest pair of jeans, a red top that was low cut and fitted without being too obvious, and strappy silver sandals that showed off my pedicure. A few swipes of mascara, some gloss, and I was done. I checked myself in the mirror over my dresser. I'd taken my hair down after having it in a twist all day so it fell in waves over my shoulders. I gave my reflection a sultry smile which made me look like a tween trying to be grown up. So much for that. Still, I looked good. Sexy without crossing over to slutty. Hopefully, Tarek would think the same. The doorbell buzzed before I could find an imperfection to fix. I pulled in a deep breath, gave myself a final once-over. 
I deserved a night of fun for a change. I was gonna enjoy it. Take that, Dad. As soon as I opened the door, Tarek grinned. His gaze roamed me from head to toe to head. You look great. He moved into my space, his fingers trailing over my waist. The move both tickled and aroused. I inhaled sharply. Eyes glittering, he moved toward the kitchen. I followed, enjoying his confidence, enjoying the way he filled my small, empty apartment. He set his grocery bag on the counter, then braced his hands on the edge and looked at me. An expression I didn't recognize played over his face. He looked almost conflicted. I moved next to him. Something wrong? His gaze searched my face. I was not going to do this right away, I swear, but... Ah, oh, hell. Before I had time to be confused, he was kissing me. His arms wrapped around me and dragged me against him as his mouth took possession of mine. No hint remained of the teasing from last night. Hunger and fire exploded between us as the kiss took on a life of its own. Tarek kissed like a man who knew what he wanted. Like he knew what he was doing. Like nothing in the world was more important than tasting my lips and bringing me pleasure. Moaning, I rose onto my toes and wound my arms around his neck. I angled my head to give him deeper access, which he took eagerly. He tasted like spice and sin, a heady flavor that filled my head and made me dizzy. He backed me against the counter, but instead of the edge of the countertop digging into my lower back, I felt his knuckles, which meant his palm was braced against the counter. Even in the midst of a wild kiss, he had the presence of mind to be concerned with my comfort. A voice somewhere deep inside said this was a guy good for more than hot pizza boy sex. But I wasn't anywhere near ready to entertain that thought, especially not when his thigh was nudging mine apart. He settled where I needed him most, and we both groaned when I pressed into him. Pleasure shot through me, white bursts of light behind my eyelids. It wouldn't take much effort for me to come simply from riding his thigh. His lips awoke a need in me I'd never felt before. Scorching, all-encompassing hunger. I could kiss him forever. A destination in its own right, rather than a means to an end. Though if the end were sex with Tarek, I'd be pretty damn okay with that, too. He trailed his lips across my cheek and down the side of my neck, leaving fire in his wake. I gasped for air and might also have gasped his name. His head rolled to my shoulder and he stayed like that, panting, each hot breath teasing my kiss-damp skin. Wow, he said, more exhalation than word. I tilted my head so my cheek rested on his hair. Yeah. Wow. His hair was softer than it looked, a silky pillow against me. I really wasn't expecting that. I couldn't help smiling. At least we were off kilter together. You don't... I pulled in a deep breath for courage. I wasn't usually forward with guys. Have to make dinner. I think just maybe I have some leftover pizza around here somewhere. He chuckled, then pressed a kiss to the hypersensitive spot where my neck met my shoulder, making me shiver. He straightened, looking down on me with heavy-lidded eyes. His smile was slow and seductive and turned my bones to gelatin. No, I'm cooking. I cannot even begin to describe how sick I am Apollo's pizza. It's good, but too much of a good thing. He slowly withdrew himself, leaving me wanting and chilled. As he started unpacking his paper bag, I wanted to wrap my arms around his waist from behind and bury my face in his back. 
anything to continue the delicious warmth I got from his touch. He warmed places in me I hadn't known were cold. I went grocery shopping and everything. He shook an onion at me, eyes twinkling. I hate grocery shopping. I usually make Cam do it. I put a hand to my chest. I'm honored. Surveying his ingredients, chicken breast, three onions, walnuts, and pomegranate juice, I tried to figure out what he was making. I will admit, I bought the chocolates. He pulled my chef's knife out of the knife block and set it on the cutting board I kept next to the sink. Frying pan and some oil? While I got him the necessary supplies, I said, What are you making? It's called Koresh Fessenjun. The foreign words rolled off his tongue like a seduction song. They weren't even pretty words, but something about a man speaking a foreign language? It was all I could do not to swoon. He poured oil into the pan I'd put on the stove, turned on the burner, then set to work peeling and chopping the onions. I kept my distance, as I was prone to gushing tears when cutting onions. And that is what? His silky words meant nothing to me. Sexy, though, they sounded coming from him. It is Iranian. My grandma used to make it for us. His hands worked rapidly, making quick work of the onions. I didn't see so much as one tear in his eyes. Is that where you're from? Iran? Like many Americans, I was totally ignorant about that part of the world, other than knowing they had oil and we had lots of soldiers there. I knew Tarek was Middle Eastern, but I couldn't place his accent, his name, or his looks to a specific country. My dad is Iranian. I was born in Egypt, where my mom is from. We moved to England when I was six. Then we moved to the U.S. when I was in high school. He used the knife to slide the onions off the cutting board and into the pan. They sizzled as they hit the hot oil. That sounds... exotic. Now that tears were no longer a danger, I couldn't help touching him. I rubbed his lower back, just above his waistband. He looked down at me, giving me that wicked half-smile. My pulse raced and my hands stilled, my fingers curling into his shirt. He dropped a kiss on my nose. Behave. What fun is that? I gave him a mock pout. This aggressive flirtation was so unlike me, but rather than feeling awkward, it felt right. Tarek brought it out of me in a way no one else had. He made a hungry, frustrated sound, then turned back to the onions. Let me guess, you are a typical American mutt? He made it sound more interesting than it should. Probably his accent. Mostly German and Irish. I've lived in Wisconsin all my life. Well, except a semester in Barcelona in college. You have roots. A home. Not exactly. Home was a lot more than a building, but that had no place in our conversation. I guess. To me, that's exotic. He watched me for a long moment, his eyes searching for something in my face. If that's exotic, you have pretty low standards. His gaze turned scorching. I think I have very high standards. Without warning, he pressed a kiss to the side of my neck. I grabbed the front of his shirt to keep from sinking into him. The way he nibbled my skin made me shudder. I don't know what your standards are, but I definitely like them. He chuckled, his hot breath puffing over my skin. I practically melted. He dragged his mouth up to my jaw, then ended with a soft kiss on my lips and turned back to the stove. He was good. A master at giving me just enough to desperately crave more, but not quite enough to satisfy me. That needed to change. As he put the chicken in the pan, I got a glass of water. I stared out the kitchen window watching a rabbit hop across the parking lot. 
not a soothing nature scene by any means, but it gave me the time I needed to pull myself back together. I set the empty glass in the sink and turned back to him. He was watching me, and when our eyes met, his smile turned predatory. My body flashed hot. So much for pulling myself together. So, his gaze roamed over me, slow, lazy, sizzling over my skin. Abruptly, he grabbed my hand in one of his, the box of chocolates in the other, and pulled me toward the table. This has to cook for about 45 minutes. Let's start with dessert. I'd rather start with him for dessert, but I wouldn't complain about sweets. But I didn't want to sit at the kitchen table, so I led him to the living room couch. He sat at one end, leaning on the arm of the overstuffed yellow couch, a hand-me-down. It was old and ugly, but ridiculously comfortable. I'd spent many nights sleeping on it instead of my bed when I fell asleep doing my reading or on the rare occasion I stayed up late watching a movie. I sat next to him, close enough our thighs pressed together. He opened the box and pulled out one of the truffles. Instead of handing it to me, he held it to my lips. His eyes danced as I bit into it, the rich, dark flavors saturating my tongue. I closed my eyes to savor it playing it up for his sake. That's amazing, I said. I wasn't exaggerating. From a local confectionery, it was possibly the best I'd ever had. I reached around him for the other piece and held it out for him. Expression hungry, he kept his gaze locked on mine as he took a bite, chewed, and swallowed. He made a show of licking his lips. I couldn't help myself. I grabbed his chin and pulled his face to mine. This kiss was extra sweet, but still hot and spicy. I tore myself away before it got out of hand. We had time. I want more, I said. He grinned and leaned in for another kiss. Chocolate. A startled laugh burst out of him. Tease, he said, again lifting the dessert for me to eat. We took turns feeding each other bites until both pieces were gone. I licked the melted bits from my fingers, and when I caught him watching me, I took my time, wrapping my tongue around each finger, even though he couldn't see. From the flare of his nostrils and the hunger and his stare, he knew what I was doing. He shifted, pulling my legs onto his lap. When I slowly drew my last finger from my mouth, he lifted his hands to my lips. I opened and pulled his index finger into my mouth. Under the candy, he was hot and spicy. Like everywhere else, I tasted him. Did his whole body have that same spice? Definitely worth investigating. I gave each of his fingers twice the attention I'd given mine. Unable to stand the intensity in his gaze, I closed my eyes and savored his flavor as I swirled my tongue around his digits, nipping lightly, sucking as I drew my mouth away. He was panting by the time I'd finished licking him clean. He dug his fingers into my hair and tilted my face up and stood with a frustrated sound, he kissed me briefly, then backed away. I need to add water to the chicken. He paused outside the kitchen, looking conflicted. If I weren't so turned on, I might have laughed at his torment. But I shared it. I wanted to be naked. Him above me and inside me. I wanted it now. To hell with sustenance. The truffles could hold us for hours. Do not move. He disappeared into the kitchen. I heard the water turn on, then off. Oh, shit. 
followed by a clatter, the hiss of the water hitting the pan, a few more cooking sounds, then he was back. His stride ate up the room in three steps. He dropped back to the couch and hauled me onto his lap. I didn't know who kissed whom, but our mouths fused together in a hot, needy joining that stole my breath and my thoughts. He kissed me like he needed me more than air. I kissed him back with the same fervor. One of his hands slid into my hair, holding my head at the angle he wanted. The other held me to him, his arm around my back, his hand on my hip. I wrapped my arms around his neck, holding on, losing myself in the pleasure. The kiss went on and on, one bleeding into the next. I began to explore his body, the solid wall of his chest, which rose and fell rapidly under my hand. His heart beat furiously, the wild rhythm matching my own. Restless, needing more, needing pressure, I shifted to straddle him. Becca, he moaned, his teeth grazed my lower lip. Thighs bracketing his, we lined up exactly how I wanted. I pressed against his thick erection and rocked my hips. Pleasure shot through me. My groan matched his. My vision swam, so I closed my eyes, letting the sensation take me. He mumbled something I didn't understand, words tense as he dragged his mouth down my neck, his tongue leaving a hot trail. His teeth outlined my collarbone, his nose moving my shirt out of the way. Like the rest of him, his hands were hot against my skin as he lifted the hem of my shirt. We were moving at a breakneck speed, but I couldn't hold on to any thought except yes. I wanted his hands and his mouth on me, everywhere. A fresh wave of pleasure washed through me, making me bold. I pulled back to look at him. As I took the bottom of my shirt from him, he dragged his lids open. His eyes were black with passion, a hint of a smile playing on his lips. I didn't look away as I slowly raised the red fabric, revealing more of my skin. His hand settled at my waist, following my shirt's progress up. The touch was firm enough not to tickle, light enough to make me crave more. I'd never undress like this for a guy, but the hunger in his eyes made me bold. His hands reached the bottom edge of my bra, his thumbs meeting in the middle, teasing. I pulled the shirt up and off, tossing it behind me. His chuckle cut through the tension heavy in the air. Hmm, that girl. His finger traced the edge of the cup, teasing my breasts. He leaned forward and pressed a kiss to the top of the other breast. I wanted to thread my hands into his hair and hold him there until he found my nipples and gave them the attention they were screaming for. Before I could, he pulled back to look at me. His hands skimmed over my shoulders and up to cup my cheeks. You are beautiful. Any man could be expected to say that when presented with nearly bare breasts. But Tarek's gaze remained fixed on my face as he spoke. Something inside me, so deeply hidden I couldn't identify it, melted. I collapsed onto his chest and kissed him. Plenty of guys had, in the throes of passion, complimented my body but no one had ever looked in my eyes and used the word beautiful. I couldn't thank him with words. He'd think I was a crazy woman, so I thanked him with my kiss. I thanked him with long strokes of my tongue against his, with tiny nips at his lower lip that made his stomach contract, with touches I hoped gave him the same pleasure he gave me. I tugged at his t-shirt to untuck it, then my hands tunneled underneath. His skin scorched my palms, his chest smooth and solid. He sat up straighter, pushing me with him, 
He wrenched his mouth away for a moment to yank off his shirt, then we crashed back together. We clung to each other, mouths fused, hands exploring. He tilted me back on the couch, settling above me. My breast strained against my thin bra, the fabric rasping nipples that begged for their turn. I squirmed, rubbing them against his chest. I felt his smile against my mouth. Then his hand plunged inside the cup of my bra. His thumb flicked my nipple and I cried out. He pulled away again and braced on his elbow. I managed to drag my eyes open and found him looking down at me. His gaze lowered to watch as he rolled my nipple. Then he looked back to my face. Watching me, he continued twisting, pulling pleasure from deep inside. What did I look like to him? Did I have the same drugged look in my eye that he did? The same expression of wonder? The same wild hair and swollen lips? He murmured something foreign, then lowered his head and sucked me into his mouth. Oh, God, I screamed. He knew exactly how hard to suck. The pleasure was unreal. No one had made me feel like this before. Like I wanted to claw out of my skin. Like I could come from nothing but him sucking my breast. His other hand slid under my butt and pulled me to him as he pressed into me. Damn, our clothes. Why were we eating dinner? I wasn't hungry for anything but him. A loud pop cut through the silence, startling us both. My hips jerked upward, crashing into him. His teeth clamped down on my nipple, stinging, but walking the right side of the pleasure pain line. The unexpected double assault sent passion whipping through me. Derek! I was so close. So close. I needed... He lifted his head. Say my name again. I heard the smile in his voice. What was he doing? I just needed a little more. I dragged my eyes open and found him smiling at me. Suddenly, uncertain, I repeated it. Accent on the first syllable. Tarek. Rhymed with Eric. Was that right? His lips widened into a grin. I like how that sounds when you say it. He nipped my lower lip. Most people pronounce it Tariq. I let it slide, but I love that you say it right. Another pop came from the kitchen. He straightened his arms, lifting himself off of me. I need to add more water. His gaze traveled the length of my body as he stood. In hindsight, this was very poor planning. His index finger trailed down the center of my chest. I sucked in my breath. Hold that thought. He looked uncomfortable as he headed for the kitchen, his arousal obvious even through his jeans. Inspired and emboldened by the heat swimming through me, I quickly discarded my bra and slid off the couch. The floor provided more room and we wouldn't have to worry about falling. I wanted space for what I had in mind. It couldn't have been 45 minutes already. When I heard the sizzle of water hitting the pan, I struck my best seductive pose. Leaning back on my elbows, hair tossed over my shoulders, one leg bent, it pushed my breasts out, which was the desired effect. It should... Tarek froze in the doorway. His whole body went rigid, and his eyes looked almost dangerous. Again, he muttered words I didn't know. Then he pounced. He moved so fast, I didn't have time to catch my breath before he was on the floor with me. His lips claimed mine, his tongue thrusting inside my mouth in a hot, desperate kiss. One hand held the back of my head the other sliding under my hips to pull me tighter to him as he thrust into me. I wrapped my arms around him, hands roaming his smooth skin. I slid one into his back pocket, cupping his tight ass and pulling him harder against me. He dragged his mouth across my cheek and sucked my earlobe into his mouth, 
setting off a fresh explosion of stars behind my eyelids. If the condoms weren't all the way in the kitchen, we would be naked. It wasn't particularly sexy, but the raw desire behind his words left me trembling. No guy had ever been so transparent about how much he wanted me. It made me feel powerful, which wasn't a familiar place for me. I liked it. Dizzy with that power, I slid my hands between us, down his tight stomach into his waistband. He sucked in his breath as I trailed my finger under the elastic of his boxers. His hand fisted in my hair, pulling, but I didn't mind the pain. It added to all the other sensations. I pressed at his hips at the same time I worked on his button. He took my instruction and rolled to the side. I followed so we lay side by side, stretched out along each other. He slid his thigh between mine as I lowered his zipper. He pulled back from our kiss, hand on my hip, the other cradling his head. Gathering all my courage, I met his eyes as my hand pressed against his lower abdomen. Slowly, I worked it lower. His jaw tightened and his nostrils flared. This close, I could see his pupils dilate, the black barely distinctive from the deep brown of his irises. I kept my palm flat against his belly, but his tip brushed the back of my hand. Such a small, simple touch, yet we both gasped. He stroked my cheek and leaned in for a kiss, soft and gentle. Becca, he breathed. When he pulled back, he broke eye contact, looking down to where my wrist came out of his waistband. Damn, that is hot. I looked too. Our legs were tangled, our hips angled toward each other, and his pants were undone. In the middle of it all, my arm. He wasn't kidding. It was beyond hot. He shifted, rubbing his full length against me. He was hot and solid and felt so good. Cheater, I murmured. I was... I wrapped my fist around his base. Whatever he'd meant to say dissolved in a groan. I pulled upward, enjoying his thickness. I loved the contrast of strength and vulnerability. It had been a while since I'd had sex, even longer since I'd given a thorough hand job. I'd forgotten the simple pleasure of holding a guy in my hands. If I felt powerful before, I was freaking Batgirl now. As sexy as it was having my hand in his pants, I quickly realized it was also limiting. Together we worked his jeans and boxers over his hips, down to his knees. He pulled my leg over his hip and took my mouth as I resumed stroking him. His kisses were desperate, broken up with moans and muttered words. His spice with the faintly sweet aroma drifting from the kitchen, swirled around me. It all combined to a flurry of sensation that was so sexy, I wanted to ride his thigh so I could find completion. But I also wanted to take care of him. More than I ever had before, I wanted to give as much as I got. I stretched my arm and cupped his balls. Nam. I had no clue what that meant, but it sounded damn sexy. With a ragged groan, he took my nipple into his mouth, sucking fiercely. I ground down on his thigh as electricity sizzled through me. It occurred to me we must look like a pair of teenagers, half-dressed, him at my breast, me stroking him off. Except my first time, I had been afraid to touch Jeremy's cock. I was the only girl left in our dorm who was still a virgin and I wanted it over with. But I had no idea what I was doing and Jeremy would sleep with any girl who looked at him sideways. Since that first time, foreplay had never lasted this long. Some kissing, then off came the clothes and on went the condom. Not that I'd only been with inconsiderate lovers, but never this wild, hungry exploration for its own sake. 
Making out was a quick pit stop on the road to sex. While I had no doubt that's where this was leading, it wouldn't until after dinner. He broke off with a gasp. Shit, that is incredible. I'm... His words trailed off as he pressed his mouth to the base of my throat. From the way he tightened and strained in my hand, I knew what he wanted to say. He was going to come. A rush of power and urgency flooded me. It wasn't enough to stroke him, have him come all over his bare chest. I wanted to taste him. I shoved him to his back and crawled between his legs. I pushed them apart and stretched out on my belly between his thighs. My body screamed at me for abandoning its pleasure. But as much as I wanted mine, I wanted this more. Becca? He went up on one elbow, looking down at me. His heavy-lidded gaze seared through me. Had I ever seen anything sexier than looking up at this beautiful, aroused man from between his legs, his straining erection in my fist? I smiled going for sultry but feeling a little shy. Let me. A startled laugh huffed out of him. Did not occur to me to stop you. He stroked my cheek, smoothing my hair back. Holding his gaze, my heart hammering against the floor by way of my ribs, I did the most brazen thing I'd ever done. I set my tongue at the base of his cock and slowly never looking away, dragged it to the tip. His moan was nearly as drawn out. It was incredible the way his pleasure fed my hunger. I licked over his head, swirling my tongue around and around until he flopped to his back, arms stretched to the sides. I set up a rhythm of stroking his base while tonguing his head, Every few licks, I gave a suck. On either side of me, his thighs tensed as he began thrusting gently. He made continuous sounds of pleasure, moans interspersed with words I didn't understand. Adding to all the sensations whirling through me, my movements dragged my bare nipples against the rough carpet. It wasn't pleasant, exactly, but nor was it unpleasant. It kept me hovering on the edge, where part of me wanted to straddle his thigh to satisfy my own needs while attending to his. He slid his hand into my hair and moved me faster. I obliged, and in an instant his whole body went rigid. I continued sucking as he emptied himself into the back of my mouth. I'd never swallowed before, but with Tarek it seemed natural. I used my tongue to sweep him clean then slowly released him. Resting my head on his hip, I waited while he caught his breath. The hand in my hair had gone slack, so I took it and laced our fingers together. After a few minutes, he squeezed mine, then pulled away. Laying there, clothes askew, the heat of the moment dissipating, I suddenly felt awkward. Dinner was probably close to done, and how did we sit and make regular first date conversation after he blew his load in my mouth? Was this even a date? Or was it a hookup? And if it was a hookup, then why were we forcing ourselves to make conversation? One of many reasons I'd been alone so long. Tarek pulled up his pants, then sat up. He helped me up, so I sat facing him. With a faint smile, he cupped my cheeks and kissed me. Not a deep kiss or a wild kiss, but a kiss with enough feeling behind it that the awkwardness dissolved. He drew away with his teeth grazing my lower lip. That was phenomenal. I buried my face in his neck and kissed him. I didn't know how to respond. I don't think I've ever been complimented on my blowjobs before. He chuckled, then helped me to my feet. Feel free to do that any time you like, and I will be sure to compliment you often. That startled a laugh out of me. I'll keep that in mind. Buttoning his jeans, he headed for the kitchen. Looks like we timed that perfectly. 
although it would have been worth burnt chicken. Chapter 3 I pulled on my shirt, leaving my bra dangling off the side of the coffee table. Batgirl had served her purpose. Besides, he still had the Batgirl undies to uncover, and the tattoo. I went to the kitchen, where he stood at the counter, pulling a pouch of 90-second rice out of the grocery bag. For the next five minutes, we busied ourselves with mundane tasks that made it feel almost like we were a real couple. I set my tiny kitchen table and poured two glasses of the Merlot he'd bought while he put the finishing touches on the chicken and microwaved the rice. As we sat, I lit a few candles and dimmed the ceiling fan overhead. He dug in right away. After chewing his first bite, he smiled. Perfect. Try it. I cut a bit of the meat smothered in a deep pink sauce. The pomegranate flavor bathed my tongue, tart, with just enough sugar added to keep it from being sour. It complemented the chicken perfectly. Delicious. I cut a second bite. His smile turned to a grin and he leaned in to kiss me. He tasted like the sauce. I'm glad you like it. Still would have been worth burning, but I'm glad we didn't. Over dinner, I asked him about growing up in Egypt. His father, a cardiologist, got a job in London when Tarek and Cam were six. Right before they started high school, his dad got a job in Chicago. He and Cam had both gone to Marquette for college. After a year of graduate school, Tarek had taken a leave of absence, but was going back in the fall. As we talked, my attention kept getting stalled out looking at his bare chest. It was hard not to stare at all those muscles I'd had my hands on. Before I had a chance to ask about his leave, he turned the conversation to me. He asked more about my job and a little about my background. I told him I'd gotten interested in dual diagnosis patients because I knew people who struggled with mental health disorders and addiction. Fortunately, he didn't ask who. Last night, you said the successes make it worth it. Tell me your biggest success so far. He studied me over his wine glass. I yanked my thoughts away from an image of climbing into his lap and licking his golden skin. He might be relaxed and sated for the moment, but I still throbbed with the need for release. I cut a bite of chicken to give myself a moment to inventory my memory. Biggest success. Let me think. Truth was, the successes were few and far between and I'd only been there part-time for a year. Okay, sure. There was one guy. An image of Gerald came into my head, making me smile. Jay was one of my first patients. He started drinking and smoking in high school, like a lot of kids. Came from a pretty poor family, so he dealt a little pot to make extra money. A sad state for any kid. Unfortunately, not an uncommon one in Milwaukee. When he was 20, he started getting pretty classic symptoms of schizophrenia. Paranoia. Voices. Tarek set down his glass and rubbed my knee under the table. He wore an expression of concern and sympathy, but didn't interrupt. Tried every drug he could get his hands on, except what his doctors prescribed, of course, to quiet the voices. Settled on crack as his favorite. Even knowing his detailed history... Having seen his medical and legal records, I had a difficult time reconciling the gentle man I knew with the crazed, paranoid person on paper. He lived like that for over 25 years. In and out of jail, in and out of the hospital, in and out of rehab, homeless more often than not. Finally sent to us on a court order. And you fixed him. There was more than a hint of skepticism in Tarek's voice. He's been clean six months. It's a long way from a slam dunk, but it's the best he's ever done. I didn't bother hiding the pride in my voice. He was officially my supervisor's patient, but I'd done a lot of work with Gerald. We were discussing making him my first official patient. I found him a room in a supervised house, helped him get the benefits he qualifies for, and most importantly, he takes his meds. That had been the hardest part. 
The side effects for antipsychotics were unpleasant, to say the least. So we'll see. Right now, he's doing great. Grinning, Tarek squeezed my knee, then withdrew his hand to take another bite. That's great. I cannot imagine how amazing it must feel to know you help someone in such an important way. It feels pretty damn good. By the time we were done eating, we'd covered most of First Date 101, which made the evening feel slightly less like a sex-only hookup. As we cleared the table and put the dishes in the dishwasher, I let myself get distracted by the tattoos on his chest. He had similar ones on each side, a few inches below his collarbones. They were simple black symbols I assumed were Arabic characters, but I couldn't find an opening in the conversation to ask about them. He also had a small, neat scar below his belly button that intrigued me. What was it about scars, even routine medical ones, that were so damn sexy? When we were done with the dishes, he returned to his chair and pulled me down on his lap. His hand moved under the back of my shirt and settled on my bare skin. I dropped my head back to give him access to my neck where he dropped faint kisses, working me into an even tighter frenzy. I squirmed, trying to find the slightest relief. I needed pressure between my legs. My hips started thrusting without my command, but they met only air. To hell with it. I took his hand from its spot on my thigh and pressed it between my legs. I covered it with my own hand and pushed down, hard, as my hips thrust again. Oh, yeah. I couldn't hold back a long moan. That's what I needed. Only more. Much more of it. And with less clothes. He lifted his head, expressions serious. Just so we're clear, I fancy you. A lot. We can take a break. Have another glass of wine. I don't drink much. I'd had a few sips of wine with dinner, but I only had more than that if something was seriously wrong. We can watch a movie then, if you'd rather. I don't want to put expectations on you. We do not have to do this. The erection throbbing between my legs was in direct contrast to his words. I pressed tighter to his hand. We really do. Nostrils flaring, he looked at me for a long, electric moment. Then his mouth covered mine, and he quickly took control, rubbing between my legs and sending delicious surges of hunger through me. But it wasn't enough. It was time to move things to the bedroom. I pulled away and stood, tugging his hand to bring him with me. He gave me that heavy-lidded smile I'd quickly grown to crave. I like a woman who asks for what she wants. He kissed me, brief but hot enough to make my toes curl and my fingers grip his waist. I was so worked up, I didn't even care if it was awkward or desperate. I needed him to touch me. I needed him to kiss me. I needed him to make me come. He grabbed something from the grocery bag, then followed me down the short hall to my bedroom. I pulled off my shirt, unbuttoned my jeans, and lay back on the bed, reaching a hand out to him. Still giving me his hungry smile, he tossed a box of condoms on my nightstand. Thankfully, he thought to bring them. I had one in my drawer, but it was old. And we hopefully were going to need more than one. Eyes locked on mine, he dropped his jeans. Batman. Lord have mercy. He was hot, he could cook, and he wore superhero boxers. It was too bad I didn't do more than flings. This guy had Keeper written all over him. But the last time I dated a Keeper, he correctly pegged me as someone with too many issues to get emotionally involved. I pushed away the memory to focus on the very sexy matter at hand. I didn't notice before. His boxers were black, with the gold bat symbol plastered across his crotch. He winked, and I would have swooned if I hadn't already been flat on my back. Then he bent down, pulled the flaps of my jeans to the side, and pressed a kiss to my lower belly. It is possible I chose this pair on purpose. I trembled, 
my stomach contracting. He was so close to where I wanted him, yet nowhere near close enough. Slowly, he drew the pants down my legs. Somehow, he made a simple task like removing jeans into a sensual experience. Goosebumps rose on my skin. He stroked his fingers up the outside of my now bare legs and hooked fingers into my panties. That girl. His voice was husky. He grazed his thumb between my thighs, catching my clit in the briefest of touches. My hips rose, straining for more, but he was too busy getting me naked. He sat on the bed and placed his palm flat on my belly. His fingers skimmed the dark curls between my legs. His gaze dragged up and down my body slowly. His look, even more than his touch, seared my skin and made me squirm. I knew the instant he saw my tattoo. He grinned, his thumb brushing over it. Then he leaned over and pressed his lips to the black and gold design on my hip. When his tongue slid out and traced the shape of the bat symbol, I lifted my hips, needing deeper pressure. He chuckled, his hot breath tickling my electrified skin. I sense a common obsession, he murmured as his mouth started a journey up my abdomen. His hand stayed where it was, just beyond where I needed it. I resisted the urge to say something corny about destiny. Or worse, my go-to of quoting Back to the Future and saying, You are my density. Batgirl was nerdy enough. Time travel movies would be too far. He paused briefly to give each of my nipples a thorough suck. And then, when I was ready to beg for anything, really, he continued up my neck and along my jaw, ending with a nibble at the corner of my lips. Propped on one elbow, he looked down at me and grinned. You are my density. For a long moment, I stared. He had not quoted my own thought back to me. His face crumpled. Sorry, stupid movie quote, never mind. He ducked down, his face aiming for my neck. As much as I wanted him to nuzzle and kiss me, I intercepted his chin and pulled his face back up. I was thinking the exact same thing. Seriously, I thought you'd think it was lame, so I didn't say it. His smile was hesitant. Really? Something stirred deep inside me, something decidedly non-sexual. I had the power to make this sexy, confident guy feel insecure. I was familiar with making my clients feel vulnerable. But as far as I knew, I'd never done that to a guy. Plus, we liked the same geeky things. I didn't know what to do with that. So I nodded and pulled him down for a kiss. The desire, the hunger between us I could handle. Deeper emotions had no place. With agonizing slowness, his fingers crept lower. I thrust and strained but nothing made him pick up his pace. When I grabbed his wrist and tried to nudge him along, he removed his hands completely. I whimpered and released him. He resumed his lazy descent as my whole body screamed. In contrast, his mouth seemed to be everywhere. Before I could register a kiss, he'd moved on. Please, I couldn't think. Even my vision was fuzzy. His tongue slid along my collarbone. Please what? No. He wasn't going to make me say it. I could barely remember my name, let alone sentence structure. Please touch. I broke off on a moan when his teeth sank into my earlobe. Why do you want me to touch you? His words were a hot breath over my ear. What do you really want? Damn, this sexy talk was hot. Or maybe it was that he'd gotten a little closer to where I needed him, or the way his boxer-covered erection stroked my hip. To hell with it. 
If it got me what I wanted, I could say it. I need to come. I had never said something so bold to a guy, but I was too far gone to care. I'd probably be hugely embarrassed later, but right now, I needed that orgasm. He plunged a finger inside me, his thumb pressing on my clit. I saw stars. Derek, I gasped. He murmured more of his foreign words, then pulled my nipple into his mouth. The addition of a second finger down below sent my hips bucking. When he set up a perfect rhythm of stroking me in precisely the right place outside and in, my legs scrambled against the quilt. The triple assault was almost too much. Could someone die of pleasure? I moaned and cried and writhed, trying to get that perfect spot that was just out of reach, that he was probably deliberately avoiding to keep me straining on the edge. For the love of humanity, please, that's too good. I couldn't tell if it was sweat or tears running down my face and into my ears. Tarek lifted his head and I could feel his gaze on me. I pried my eyes open and almost came from the raw passion on his face. You have never met your G-spot before? His smile had a touch of cockiness. Like he was superior to every guy I'd been with before. Which he totally was. We've met, I huffed out. I could barely breathe. How was he talking when his hand was working such magic? Shouldn't he be using that mouth to kiss me? Lick me? I've just never introduced her to anyone else before. The words slipped out before I could stop them. Another thing to be embarrassed about later. I'm honored to be the first. His fingers shifted. The world shattered. I arched into his hand as fireworks went off in my brain and between my legs. Heat and hunger and pleasure in one explosive package, pounding through me, relentless. It stole my thoughts, my breath, and my spine. At some point, I regained the ability to breathe. Thinking came back. Moving was last. Eventually, I turned my head to the side and kissed his forehead. It took gargantuan effort. As satisfying as that had been, I still ached. The coil of desire between my legs hadn't fully released. I squirmed and pumped against him. His fingers were still inside me, still stroking me. He'd flown me over the edge, and now he was bringing me back to soaring. I wasn't going alone this time. We'd had plenty of foreplay. The box of condoms he brought said he wanted the same thing I did. I pulled his face to mine and kissed him. Now, I whispered into his mouth. With deliberate slowness, he pulled his hand out of me. We rolled and shifted so he was on top of me. My thighs spread to cradle his hips. His thick cock pressed where seconds ago his hand had been. Say it, he murmured. What do you want now? Was he going to do this every time? Not that I minded. It was pretty damn hot. I want you to get rid of Batman, and I want to come again. My own words sent pleasure zinging through me. I should have tried this sexy talk thing a long time ago. I want you inside me when I do. A sound of desire rumbled up from deep in his chest. I felt his belly contract against me. He kissed me hot and hard, but brief. Then he pushed himself off the bed. In a flash, he was naked and between my thighs. Watching him touch himself, even to put on the condom, sent a fresh wave of hunger through me. I hooked my ankle around the back of his thighs, stroking him with my foot as I looked up at him. He was perfectly muscled, Golden skin dusted with black hair from his knees to his face. In the faint light given off by my bedside lamp, his eyes were cast in shadow. They looked like endless black pools. Even so, 
there was no mistaking the hunger in his expression. He was as turned on as I. This wasn't a mediocre roll in the hay for either of us. I took his hand and tugged him to me. His mouth immediately found mine, his tongue sliding in to take possession. One hand tangled into my hair and held me in place for his kiss. Despite the intimate press of our bodies, it was the tender passion as his lips stroked mine that set my blood on fire. His other arm slid under me, tilting me to him. I wrapped him in my hand and guided him to my entrance. Becca. He wrenched his mouth away and looked down at me. His face swam before me as his tips slid inside. As his face came into focus, he slid deeper. Slowly, he filled me. I palmed his wonderfully tight ass, tried to pull him all the way, but he wouldn't be rushed. I wanted to close my eyes and get lost in the heat, but I couldn't look away from him. His eyes were like black holes, sucking me in. His muscles were rigid as I slid my hands up his back. His control was costing him. When I thought I couldn't stand another second, he reached the hilt. Pressed as close together as two people could be, he ground against me, rolling his hips in a slow circle that made glitter rain down in front of my eyes. I couldn't stop myself from biting his shoulder. Tarek, I moaned against one of his intriguing tattoos. He did it again, a lazy circle that had my nails digging into his back. A third roll, then he pulled back and quickly pressed deeper. As he set up a gentle rhythm of thrusting and rolling, I did my best to match him. My hands explored everywhere I could reach, fingers tracing his lips, nails scoring his shoulders, palms smoothing over his back. The flex and release of his butt as he thrust intrigued me. It was perfect the right size to cup in my palms and use as leverage to pull him closer. His hand roamed as well. He stroked me everywhere, from my knee to my throat. Then he settled at my breast, moving from one nipple to the other, whipping my insides into delicious chaos. And all the while, we kissed, his lips on mine, my teeth nipping him, our tongues searching, Moving in time with our thrusts, the intensity consumed me, letting me forget everything for those few blissful moments. That delicious tension inside quickly reached critical levels. I loved the way he made me feel. I wanted it to last, wanted to hang on to this electric pleasure forever. But I also wanted the orgasm that floated just out of reach. I wanted that explosion, the weightless oblivion brought by pure pleasure. As his kisses moved from my mouth to my face, then down my neck, sounds and words came from my mouth. I didn't know I was going to say them, but I was moaning things like, please, and oh God, in an unending stream. When his mouth found the sensitive spot at the base of my throat, I groaned his name. He made a sound that was part growl, part chuckle, and used his teeth. Tarek! Screaming his name seemed to set something free inside him. He buried his face in my neck as his thrust turned frantic. I gripped his hips and met him, stroke for stroke, as the pleasure reached white hot. His lips moved, making a wet trail down my neck and along my collarbone until he reached my breast. I knew what was coming, the anticipation almost as delicious as the act would be. But I was unprepared for the pleasure that seared through me. I screamed again, and I was coming. It lasted forever, twisting endlessly through me. It drained me, and I wanted to collapse. But Tarek was still waiting for his turn. Not so patiently, if the force of his thrust was any indication. He let out a continuous moan, punctuated with a grunt each time he reached the hilt. With my last bit of energy, 
I heaved into his thrusts. I stroked and kissed him, trying to give him what he wanted. At last, his back arched and his hips pressed me into the mattress. His fingers dug into my hips as he shook. Then he collapsed on me. I didn't mind the limp weight. It meant I could collapse too. For endless minutes, we lay like that, pulses pounding and gasping for air. Eventually, some sense of reality trickled back, thoughts and sweaty skin and the tang of sex in the air. I waited for the awkwardness to intrude. It always did after my first time with a guy, and I'd never slept with someone I barely knew. Yet the minutes ticked by and it didn't come. Tarek rolled off me, staying close to my side and draping an arm over my waist. I don't think there's a word for how incredible that was. His words were choppy from his continued breathlessness. I mustered up the energy to make a sound of agreement. He rolled his head to look at me, the ever-present smile curving the corners of his mouth. I wanted to kiss him, but that required moving. That good, huh? I repeated the sound, eliciting a chuckle from him. My ego will take that as a resounding yes. I managed to kiss his shoulder, conveniently nestled under my cheek. The black ink there caught my eye. What does this mean? I brushed another kiss over the symbol. It's Arabic for family. His fingers trailed up and down my back, lazy strokes that made me want to stretch like a cat. Maybe take a cat nap. What does the other one say? Brother. We were silent a moment, him stroking my back, my thumb tracing the shape of his brother tattoo. Are you and Cam close? Mm-hmm. He has the same ones. For no apparent reason, that touched me deep inside. Maybe because I was an only child. I couldn't fathom the bond between siblings, let alone identical twins. We got them last fall. My mom hates them, but you know moms. That's how they are. I tried. I really did not to react. But my response was automatic when the subject of my mom came up, even indirectly. My whole body stiffened and I pulled inward. I already knew Tarek well enough to know he wouldn't let me retreat to the safe haven I'd created in my mind. My best defense was to change the subject. I propped myself up on my elbow and looked down at him. He looked good with his messy dark hair framed by my pale blue sheets, like he belonged. So I guess this is where we have that awkward moment. My heart started drumming, but I forced out the words. Better to do this now. I don't know if you wanted to stay or if... Shit. This was really awkward. He grabbed my hand and kissed my palm. You look like you might need a little rest. Damn it. I tried to ignore the sinking in my chest. He was going to leave. Why was I even asking? I rarely spent the whole night with a guy, and it was always at his request. I'm not ready for tonight to be over, but I'm not going to stay where I'm not welcome. He threaded our fingers together. I'd roll with it. Deal with the implications later. Like him, I wasn't ready for him to leave. I squeezed his hand. I don't want you to go yet. Something shifted in his eyes. They sparked with hunger as he pressed his lips to my wrist. Good. Then he nudged me so I rested my cheek on his chest. Take a little nap. I promise I'll behave. My eyes were already shut, my mind drifting. Maybe. Chapter 4 Around midnight, I woke to the warm cocoon of bodies and blankets Tarek had constructed around us. He kept me wrapped in his arms and covered us with my Wonder Woman fleece blanket. She was almost as good as Batgirl. As cozy as it was in bed with Tarek, who was sleeping soundly, I needed to stretch out the knot forming in my lower back. Plus, I was starving. 
we'd worked up an appetite. I pulled on my panties and his t-shirt and headed for the kitchen. The remnants of dinner sat on the stove, cold and a lot less appealing than they'd been a few hours ago. Plus, fancy chicken wasn't a midnight snack. I needed pizza. I popped a few pieces in the toaster oven and sipped a glass of water while I waited for it to heat. My nap had refreshed me, and thinking about the hot naked man in my bed had delicious tension rippling through me. I'd take the pizza with me, offer to share the snack, then offer up myself as dessert. I felt looser and more relaxed than I had in weeks, but my back still had a kink, so I bent over, feet spread, and put my hands on the floor. The stretch pulled through my muscles, working out the knot. Behind me, I heard the shuffle of bare feet, but pretended not to notice. Let him get an eyeful. Despite knowing he was there, I started when his hand slid over my hip. I could get used to waking up to this. I could hear the humor in his voice, not quite masking the undercurrent of hunger. He pressed himself against my butt, half aroused, growing harder as he stroked my hips with his hands and slid his length along my crack. I moaned as he crackled through me. I stood, turning to face him. Glitter sprinkled through my vision and my head felt woozy. I stumbled against him. Whoa, stood up too fast. He caught me around the waist and studied me. Sure it wasn't me making you lightheaded? My vision cleared and I felt more grounded. Meeting his twinkling eyes, I patted his bare chest. Pretty sure it was a head rush. He quirked an eyebrow. Touche. I laughed as I turned to take out the pizza. Instead of heading back to my room, we curled up on the couch and shared the steaming, gooey treat. He pulled my feet into his lap, and I used my toes to tease his boxer-covered cock. He sucked in a sharp breath, but didn't stop me. After eating silently for a few minutes, Tarek plucked a string of cheese off my cheek. What are we doing? Uh, wait, what? You wanted to do this now? Eating pizza? I didn't want to have a serious conversation. I was enjoying myself far too much to deal with reality. He set down his slice and looked at me, a serious expression I'd never seen on him. I know this is not really the ideal time, and I know this makes me a girl for asking, but this... He waved his hand between us. Is more than tonight right? I chewed slowly, contemplating how to answer that. I definitely wanted more amazing sex. But how did I tell him I wanted no other strings? Maybe a little honesty wrapped in a non-answer. I like pizza, but I don't like it four times a week. He considered me, his expression still serious. I didn't like serious Tarek. I wanted playful Tarek or horny Tarek back. Ask and ye shall. He grinned. I had to negotiate ridiculous favors to make sure no one else delivered your pizzas. Excitement fizzled through me. He'd pulled strings to see me? Really? He took the empty plate from my hands and set it on the coffee table. Really? His thumb stroked my cheek as he tilted my face up. He tasted like grease and oregano and sex. Damn, that was a potent combination. So this is two people having a whole lot of fantastic sex, he murmured as his mouth trailed across my skin and to my ear. I shuddered, my nails scratching down his chest. Lots and lots of amazing sex. Thankfully, we were on the same page. In a flash, I was naked. Another instant, and so was he, kneeling between my splayed thighs. Where did... I cupped his balls as he rolled on a condom. What it with, just in case? He fell forward and took my mouth, and then my body. There was no teasing, no slow build. He set a relentless pace pounding into me with a wildness I'd never experienced. It set something free inside me, something deep and primal. I bit down on his lip, 
dragging a growl from him, which was hot as hell. Drawing a reserve of strength I wasn't aware I had, I shoved him off me, pushed him to his back and climbed on top of him. I didn't ease the harsh pace he'd set as I rode him. My hands gripped his chest, my nails digging into his flesh. He mumbled his gorgeous foreign words as he gripped my hips, pulling me down and heaving up for each crazed meeting of our bodies. My orgasm took me by surprise. Sharp and explosive, it knifed through me, fire singeing me from the inside. He followed me instantly, teeth grazing my neck as he snarled my name. When I collapsed, I hit his chest so hard I almost rolled off him. He caught me around the waist and yanked me back on top of him. Some awkward shifting, then we lay side by side, my back pressed to the cool couch cushion, my front against his warm, sweat-damp body. Don't go anywhere. He pressed an open mouth kiss to my shoulder, then slipped off the couch and out of the room. Like I could move. Three intense orgasms in under six hours had me totally drained. Tarek returned, sauntering across the room naked, condom disposed of, and seemingly without an ounce of self-consciousness. My eyes drank in his beautiful body, toned, golden brown, long and lean and powerful. I couldn't quite breathe as he settled down next to me. I'd never been with a guy who got to me the way he did. On such a primal level, deep inside where the animal woman lived. He smoothed my hair off my shoulder and kissed me on the same spot he had a moment ago. What's wrong? Yeah, like I was telling him. Just thinking how you're hotter than anyone else I've screwed. Still catching my breath. Then, to change the subject, I reached between us and ran my fingers over his soft penis. A glance down confirmed what I'd suspected but hadn't been sure about when he was hard. You're not circumcised. He smiled. Is that a problem? I rolled his foreskin back and forth over his head. It was sort of neat. I liked the play of soft over solid, different than the usual skin stretched tight over an engorged cock. I like it. I've never encountered it before. It's often not done until puberty in Egypt, he shuddered. Thankfully, my parents didn't make us do it since we lived in England by then. I chuckled. Didn't want that? I had pretty much a permanent heart on at 13. I would have gladly had a lot of things touch me, but not a scalpel. I laughed hard at that. My fingers continued to roll his skin around. I couldn't bring myself to stop exploring this new sensation. Don't let me interrupt what you're doing. He nibbled on my mouth, kissing me every few words. But I'm not entirely responsible for the results. Warning heard. I gave him a last stroke that moved my hand to his hip, slid it over and rested it on the curb of his butt. And this, he skimmed his knuckles over the dark blonde curls between my legs. Is your natural color? I think so. He pulled back to give me a questioning look. I started dyeing my hair when I was 12. Dad had grounded me for two weeks when I came home with dark auburn hair. But after three days, he got tired of enforcing it. I've been every natural color out there, and I went purple for a few months in college. Not a good look for me. It made my complexion look pasty. But it hasn't been natural since then. He wound a red strand around his finger. I like it. I've been wearing a deep brown, a shade or two from black, with fire engine red streaks for a year. The bright red suits you. Mischief sparked in his eye. Although I would love to see you with Batgirl's natural red hair. I grinned. I'll keep that in mind. He kissed me, hot and hungry, but undemanding. He stroked my thigh, then rested his hand on my butt as he pulled back. So. So. Just like that, it got awkward. You want me to go? Or should we go to your room and get some sleep? Panic tightened my chest. 
but with Tarek, the lines were so blurry, I didn't know which idea caused it. I imagined kissing him goodnight at my door, then climbing into bed alone, waking up and eating a sad bowl of cereal by myself. My mental picture shifted. The two of us in my bed, sleeping in the warm cocoon we'd had earlier, sunlight streaming in, him rising above me as he made love to me before I was fully awake. It wasn't really a choice. Don't go. I woke alone. When I rolled over, the pillow still held the imprint of his head. The sheet was warm where he'd been. His scent lingered on the sheets. From the other side of the apartment, I heard a clank that my groggy brain identified as mug. Coffee. He was making me coffee. It was entirely possible he was perfect. Sure enough, a minute later he appeared, a mug in each hand. We sat side by side, backs against the wall, sipping our coffee. I tried to think of something to say, to fill the silence that would turn awkward any moment. Except it didn't. No small talk came to mind but the silence remained comfortable, companionable, just nice, which was so foreign to me and made my skin twitch. I needed to say something. You mentioned you're going back to school. How come you quit? A shadow flashed across his face, but it was gone before I had a chance to comment on it. Some family stuff came up and I had to take a year off. I'm going back in the fall. His vague answer tugged at my curiosity, but if I had any hope of keeping our relationship casual, I couldn't afford to indulge it. Before he could elaborate, although his stiff shoulders indicated he didn't intend to, I said, you said architecture, right? I don't really know much about that. I know you design buildings and Frank Lloyd Wright is from Wisconsin, but that pretty much encompasses my knowledge of the subject. Shoulders relaxing, he smiled. It wasn't the wide, genuine smile I'd gotten used to. Something still bothered him, but I wouldn't pry. That's about it. I've always found the huge variety of buildings fascinating. I'm especially interested in designing buildings that use sustainable materials, renewable energy, stuff like that. He shrugged, tree hugger stuff. I poked his calf with my foot. That's great. I'm a bleeding heart social worker. I get it. He put his coffee on my nightstand and turned to face me. What about your family? You haven't said anything about them. I saw a picture of you and I assume your dad, but that was it. Don't freak out. It's not his fault. The rest of my brain ignored the tiny voice of rationality. I felt like someone injected me with ice water moving like someone else controlled me, like the demons of the past were in possession of my brain, I turned away and got out of bed. I really need to get back to work on my paper. It's due tomorrow. I was across the room with the speed of an Olympic sprinter. So uh, I'll see you later. Moving in a fog, I went to the bathroom and turned on the shower. My rational mind screamed at me to go back to him. He deserved at least a brief explanation. Hell, he'd avoided talking about his own family issue. I was an idiot to blow up what we had last night because I had mommy issues. But I couldn't make myself do it. Even after 13 years, the wound was so raw I couldn't talk about my mom without overwhelming pain. Tarek thinking I was a psycho and never speaking to me again was better than talking about mom. The hot water felt good on my sore body. Our night had been deeply satisfying, but also taxing. I wasn't used to activity more vigorous than walking to the bus stop. I stood under the spray, letting the drops clear my mind. When the bathroom door banged open, I wasn't surprised. I didn't know if I should yell at him to go or beg him to stay. So I kept quiet and let him make the decision. The shower curtain pulled back and Tarek stepped into the small space. His body seemed bigger in the narrow tub. His eyes sparked with frustration, his whole body tense as he loomed over me. I wasn't scared, exactly. He would never hurt me. 
but he was pissed. It was intimidating. I took an involuntary step back. His hand wrapped around my shoulder and he pulled me against him. His erection pressed against my belly. Oh, well then. A flush spread through my chest, up my neck and face. I'd never had angry sex before. Heat settled low, tension coiling inside me. You don't have to talk about your family. His voice was low with barely controlled anger. But you do not get to dismiss me like I'm your bloody manhole. He was mad because I'd hurt his feelings? I'd hurt his feelings? I stared at him, trying to process that I held the power to hurt him. That what I said or did to him was of any consequence beyond sex. You do not get to ruin this. He practically snarled. For another long heartbeat, we stared at each other. Then I grabbed his face and yanked him to me. Our mouths crashed together, teeth and tongues clashing. He backed me against the wall, lifted me and entered me in one smooth, long slide. In that position, I was powerless to do anything but ride along as he slammed into me, over and over. One of his hands held my weight. The other slid between my back and the tile, protecting me each time he thrust deep. I'm sorry, I gasped between kisses. He grunt laughed. I think, thrust, it's safe, thrust, to say, thrust. Oh God, yes, there. My vision swam. I am not, thrust, thrust. Damn, that's good, thrust. Holding, thrust, a grudge. Why was that so hot? His mouth sealed to mine and with two more thrusts of his tongue and his cock, I was coming. Wild and fast and intense and consuming. His body slammed mine again, 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 drawing out my pleasure, driving toward his. With a long groan, he pulled himself from me and pressed against my belly. He jerked in my arms as his warm cum shot onto my skin. As soon as he stopped shaking, he collapsed at the opposite end of the tub, staring at the ceiling. Shit. I forced my own legs not to turn to jello and instead rinsed off my stomach, then shut off the water. He looked up at me, his expression dazed. I don't know what this is, but it's more than one night. He held up his hand. I took it and let him pull me down to his lap. He dropped his head back, looking at the ceiling again. Tell me your family is none of my business, but don't treat me like a fuck toy. My chest flushed with guilt. That about wrecked me. The intensity of the conversation nearly choked me, but I didn't want this to be over because I was a chicken shit. I cupped his cheek and turned him to face me. I'm sorry. He kissed me so sweetly it made me ache. I'd been on such an emotional roller coaster since he walked into my apartment last night. Tears pulled at the backs of my eyes, which was beyond ridiculous. And what did I have to cry about? The hottest guy I'd ever met had spent the past 12 plus hours making me come as many times as was humanly possible and wanted the chance to keep doing it. What the hell was wrong with me? I shouldn't have been such a bitch. My mom died when I was 11. It's, I don't talk about it with anyone. It's not personal. Part of me actually wanted to tell him the whole sordid, painful story, but the thought made my chest too tight for words. I'm sorry you lost her. He stroked my wet hair out of my face. If you ever want to talk, I'm happy to listen, but I won't ask, I promise. It felt like there was more to say, like something unspoken hung in the air between us, but I didn't know what it was, so I laid my head on his chest and absorbed his warmth. This may be the oddest afterglow I've ever had. Leave it to me to avoid silence by saying something ridiculous like that. But we had to make the most absurd picture, curled up in the empty tub, wet and naked. 
He chuckled, the sound rumbling against my cheek. Likewise. We stayed like that for a minute. I started getting cold and was about to get up to get a towel when he said, So. The one small word carried so much weight. I didn't want him to continue. It couldn't be something good. We forgot. I forgot a condom. I felt his tension as he held his breath. I stroked my hand over his shoulders, kneading the tight muscle. We're okay, unless you've got some horrible disease. His chest sank as he exhaled. No, I'm healthy. I'm sorry. It was stupid. I was pissed so I did not think to grab one when I came in here and then I got caught up in... Anyway, it was a dumb move and it won't happen again. I sat up so I could see his face. A frown twisted his features. It was so uncharacteristic of him. I couldn't help smiling. Anything to bring back his matching smile. Then no worries. I'm healthy too. And without the pill, I spend a day each month curled up in bed with agonizing cramps. What the hell was I saying? And that was probably TMI. Sorry. Anyway, I'm on the pill. We're both healthy. You pulled out. So it's all good. And I'm going to stop talking now because I'm rambling like an idiot. And look, I'm still talking. I should... He kissed me, which was good since I probably would have kept going. Except his kiss was so gentle and sweet. It broke something inside me and caused an actual physical ache in my chest and stomach, not lower down where I'd gotten used to him making me ache. So I pulled back. I'm freezing. I lent him a towel and we headed back to my bedroom to dry off and get dressed. After I'd donned my usual homework uniform of yoga pants and a t-shirt, Wonder Woman today, I smiled as he pulled on yesterday's shirt. I hooked my fingers in his belt loops and pulled him in for a kiss. Even if he made me ache in an uncomfortable way, I couldn't help myself. Because he made me ache in the good way, too. Walk of shame? He grinned. No shame. Cam won't give you a hard time, gone all night, coming home in yesterday's clothes, I teased. Cam won't have a clue what I wore yesterday, and he can give me all the shit he wants about staying over. It was worth every second. This kiss was again tender, with just enough heat to curl my bare toes. How could he make me want him again so soon? I pushed him away abruptly. You need to go. I smiled to let him know this wasn't another dismissal. I have to work. I thought you finished your paper, he said. Nevertheless, he followed me down the hall. I finished the first draft. Today, I have to edit and rewrite. One more day. Tomorrow, I turn it in and await the final grade. Unless the unthinkable happened and I got an F, I would graduate next Saturday and never write another paper again. At least not for a grade. You worked too hard. He stopped next to the door and turned to me. So when are you done? When can I see you again? It was tempting to tell him to come back that night. To spend another night dozing in his arms, waking to have wild animal sex. But if I didn't get a decent night's sleep, I would be a mess tomorrow. He cupped the back of my head and pulled me close with an arm around my waist. A wicked gleam danced in his eyes. I work tomorrow night, and we could probably both use a sleep tonight. I work all day tomorrow and Tuesday, I said. And yeah, I'm going to be mentally and physically exhausted by tonight. The curl of his lips matched the wickedness in his eyes. It wasn't fair to let one man be so damn sexy. I couldn't stop looking at him. Couldn't stop wanting to kiss him, or touch him, or rip my clothes off and rub my naked body on him. I do have Wednesday off. No work, no class. Come to Paulo's at 7.30 on Tuesday. I'm off then and don't work again until 7.30 Wednesday. He pulled me tighter against him, 
kissing me behind my ear. I trembled as shivers tickled my spine. Sure, we could go to a movie or something. A movie wasn't a real date. If we didn't go on a real date, we weren't dating. We were just sex buddies. His chuckle blew hot air across my neck. Make out in the dock like old kids. His lips trailed along my jaw, then over my chin to my mouth. This time, the kiss was more heat and less sweet. He devoured me, his tongue wrapping around mine. He leaned against the door and held me against him as his thighs slid between mine. On instinct, I pressed against him. But before I could get swept away, I planted my palms on his chest and pushed away. Go. I stood out of reach, pointing at the door behind him. He grinned dark eyes dancing. Good luck with your paper. He opened the door and stepped into the hall. Dream of me. Winking, he blew me a kiss and disappeared. Like there was any chance I wouldn't dream of him. Chapter 5 I work in an hour and I need details, so talk fast. Grace's voice was garbled through my cell phone. I was leaving work and reception was spotty inside the old brick building. I'd ignored her call Sunday, texting back that I had to finish the paper. Yesterday, I'd worked all day and she'd worked at night. She was a social worker at a women's center and often worked nights, accompanying rape victims to the ER. I wasn't exactly sure what to tell her. Did I share that I'd had the best sex of my life? Four times, because each time with Tarek was tied for first place. And I had no idea how to answer the inevitable questions she would ask. Is he a good cook? She asked. I stepped out into the warm May evening. A breeze was drifting in off the lake, adding a touch of cool to the air. It was a perfect late spring evening. Maybe Tarek and I could skip the movies and go down to the lakefront instead. We could get frozen custard and find a private spot to make out. Excellent cook, I said to Grace. He made an Iranian dish of his grandma's. Marry him. He's hot. He cooks. Marry him. I laughed. Yeah, that's not moving too fast at all. Not that we've taken it slowly. He a good kisser? Excellent. Grace laughed. Now that I was outside, the connection was clear so the loud, hearty sound only hurt my ear a little. Good body, the best. And did you? My cheeks heated. Good thing she couldn't see me. I will take your silence for an affirmative. I didn't have a response, so I continued the silence, letting her draw her own conclusions. Correct conclusions. You naughty girl. It's about time. I'm at my car. I pulled out my keys and clicked the lock. You need to get ready for work and I need to get ready for my date. Except it wasn't a date. I don't work Thursday night. If you can tear yourself out of bed, let's get dinner. I need better gossip. I hesitated. What if Tarek wanted? Sure, I'll call you during lunch. We can figure out details. I was not blowing off my best friend to get laid. Tarek may be a god in bed, but we were just having fun. Sorry, Tarek's not here. The hostess at Paulo's wrinkled her pierced nose at me. In fact, if you find him, you can tell him Paulo's pretty pissed. I frowned, my head tilting to the side. Before I could voice my question, she said, he never showed, didn't call, no idea where he is. I, okay, thanks. Not fully processing her words, I backed away from the hostess stand and out the door. Standing on the sidewalk, I let her words sink in. Tarek hadn't shown up for work, hadn't called in sick, just didn't show. My first thought was it seemed out of character for him, but I didn't know him that well. I dropped down onto the bench outside Paolo's front window. We were just having fun. I shouldn't feel this gaping hole that he'd blown off work. What did I care if he delivered his pizzas? 
except it also meant he'd blown me off. I pulled my phone out of my purse, unlocked the screen, and opened my text. My stomach dropped farther. I didn't know his number. I couldn't text to ask where he was. He didn't have my number either. Hell, I didn't even know his last name. I was such a fool. Shortly after nine o'clock, Grace texted me. I tore myself away from Buffy the Vampire Slayer reruns, set down my pretzels and read the message. Grace, you're gonna get a call from an unknown number, answer it and stop eating the damn pretzels, you'll get dehydrated. Best friends were annoying. She knew I preferred salty to sweet when I was wallowing. But what the hell did her message mean? She didn't even know Tarek had stood me up. Although if he'd skipped work, it was probably bigger than us. Still, it showed he wasn't the guy I'd created in my head. He was still a great cook and a sex god, but he wasn't the upstanding citizen I thought, which was good. It would make it easier to stop myself from falling for him, which had been a very real danger a few hours ago. I didn't have room in my life for a relationship. This was no time to rethink my no relationship policy. I was starting a full-time job soon. I had to focus on that. Tarek was just a little bit of fun or one night of fun as it turned out. As Grace's cryptic text had predicted, my phone rang a few minutes later, a local 414 number, but I didn't recognize the rest of it. Hello? Becca, I'm so glad I got you. Tarek's voice wrapped around me, instantly settling the annoyance I'd been feeling, which wasn't okay. He couldn't just call and think everything was fine. Tarek, I kept my voice deliberately neutral. I'm so sorry about tonight. I did not know your number and I did not know how else to find you other than showing up at your door and I, well, that wasn't an option tonight. He sounded exhausted, drained. How did you get my number? Your friend, the one you were out with the other night. Apparently she works here. It took a second for me to understand what he was saying. You're in the ER? I was a horrible bitch. He hadn't blown me off. He was sick or hurt. Are you okay? I'm fine. My brother, his voice choked off. Oh no. The nosy gossip in me wanted details, but it wasn't my place to ask. I'm so sorry. Awkward silence hung between us. Did I reschedule our plans? Give him a breezy call me? Ask about his brother? Look, he said, voice even more choked than a moment ago. Our parents are out of town, so I'm alone here with him. Do you think? He cleared his throat. I heard shuffling before his voice came back. My stomach teeter-tottered. Going to the hospital with him was too much, too girlfriendy. But if he asked, I knew I'd say yes. Don't ask, please don't ask. I know it's above your pay grade, but do you think maybe you could come down here? Maybe keep me company for a little while? Until I know it is okay to leave. They haven't decided if they're gonna admit him yet, but I... Shit. Sure. I almost smiled at his rambling. I understood the nervous ramble all too well. You're at County Memorial? Yes. Hang on. More of the muffled sounds. I could vaguely hear voices, but it was garbled. He'd likely put his hand over the microphone. While I waited, I got off the couch and flipped off the TV. After depositing my pretzels in the kitchen, I headed for my room to change. I hadn't dressed fancy to go out, jeans and another Batgirl t-shirt, but I'd gone straight for the yoga pants and Princess Leia tea when I got home. The Leia tea was an XL, much more appropriate for wallowing about being stood up. You there? He sounded even more exhausted than he had a minute ago. What was going on? Yeah. They are admitting him. One he's in a room, I'll text you. I'm gonna have to do a bunch of paperwork first, so you might as well wait until he's settled. I... Okay. It seemed odd to intrude on such a private family situation, but he was dealing with it on his own, and he'd sounded a little desperate. 
My inner social worker couldn't let him be alone. You need me to bring anything? A bat so I can beat some bloody sense into Cam? He cleared his throat, then sighed. No, I don't need anything. Just you. It was almost an hour before Tarek texted me the room number, which left me to obsess over his last comment about needing me. He didn't mean it the way it sounded. I was being ridiculous and girly. He needed someone with him because his parents were gone. He didn't need me, specifically. I texted Grace to thank her for passing on my number. She'd responded that we would talk at dinner, but she was tied up with a family whose 19-year-old had attempted suicide after a sexual assault. So instead of stopping in to say hi to her, I went straight to the fifth floor. The hall was eerily quiet as I made my way along the carpeted floor, looking for room 517. The steady beep of monitors provided the only background noise. Most doors were shut so the patients could sleep. The name on door 517 read K. Karimi. So now I knew their last name. I knocked. The door opened, revealing an exhausted Tarek. His hair stood up in every direction, much like it had after our night together. His face was tight, shoulders rigid, eyes lacking their usual sparkle. Becca. He said my name on an exhale as he pulled me to him. My arms went around his warm, solid chest, my hands rubbing his tense back. Thank you, he murmured pressing his lips into my hair. Get a room, Wanka. I'm not dead over here. Any tension my quick rubdown had released came back when Cam spoke. Tarek pulled me into the room and shut the door. I glanced at the bed. It was surreal, seeing who my eyes insisted was Tarek sitting in the bed, pale with wires and tubes coming out of his blue and white gown. I knew it wasn't Tarek, but it was hard to take in. Hi. I'll take awkward moments for 400, Alex. Thanks for coming, Cam said without any sincerity. Now he can stop bitching at me. Tarek held up a finger. Do not start with me. I... He held his breath. Nope. Not going there. You need to rest and get better. Then I will kick your ass. I had no idea what was going on. I didn't like the feeling, but it wasn't the time to ask. Tarek slumped into a chair on the far side of the bed and gestured to the one next to him. I sat, but I couldn't make myself pretend to relax. My spine remained straight, my hands clenched in my lap. I wanted to be supportive for Tarek, but it was painfully obvious I didn't belong. The old Sesame Street song ran through my head. One of these things is not like the other. One of these things doesn't belong. We sat in thick, awkward silence for what felt like hours. A quick check of my phone said it was three minutes. The only sound was the steady beep of Cam's heart monitor and his mildly labored breathing. The antiseptic smell nearly choked me, so I focused on inhaling through my mouth. An electronic ping startled a gasp out of my mouth. My pulse skipped. Tarek pulled his phone out of his pocket and stared at the screen. Pop got my message. They won't be in port until Friday. He will call me for an update. He looked at me. Our parents are on a Tahitian cruise. It's their 25th anniversary. Sounds nice. More uncomfortable silence. I sat on my hands to keep myself from pulling out my phone and checking the time. Delightful as this is, I think I'm going to get some sleep. You kids go have monkey sex and don't worry about me. Here, alone, in the hospital. Piss off, Tarek growled. His eyes narrowed as he glared at his brother. Wow. I thought he'd been pissed the morning I blew him off. But he practically vibrated with fury at his brother, which seemed like an unusual reaction to someone being in the hospital. Thanks for stopping by, Becca. Means a lot to Tarek which means a lot to me. I didn't know how to respond to Cam's heavy sarcasm, so I got up and followed Tarek to the door. He yanked it open. I'll be back tomorrow. He took my hand, led me into the hall, and pulled the door shut behind us. 
His arm muscles bunched like it was an effort not to slam it. Then he grabbed my face and held it between his palms as he kissed me. My chest ached at the desperation in his kiss, the ache I could feel coming from him. I held on to his wrists and kissed him back, doing my best to let him know I would give him whatever he needed. His ache made me ache. He pulled back and rested his forehead on mine. Thank you for coming. I'm sorry about Cam. He's usually not such a prick, but he's not at his best. He laughed humorlessly. That is one way to put it. He pressed his lips to my forehead, then took my hand. He laced our fingers together as we started toward the elevator. I'm sure you have questions, but can we get out of here first? I need to eat something. I did not get any dinner. His gaze traveled over me as we got on the elevator. The ghost of a smile played at the corners of his lips, and there was a flash of his usual good humor in his eyes. And if you let me, I would like to lose myself in you for a few hours. My breath sucked out of my chest. I'd hate to think I could have helped and didn't take the chance. Would it be very nice of me? With a low groan, he tugged me closer to his side, one corner of his mouth curling into a full smile. He lowered his head to kiss me, but the elevator door slid open and we were in the lobby near the ER. Since he'd come in an ambulance, we took my car. The apartment he and Cam shared was on the east side, only six blocks from mine. He pointed me toward the couch. Have a seat. I'll be right back. He disappeared down the hall. It was a generic apartment, much like mine. White walls, beige carpet. They had nicer furniture than I'd expect in a young guy's apartment. The coffee table, side table, and TV stand all matched, as did the couch and love seat. Instead of sitting, I rounded the breakfast bar to the kitchen. After checking a few cupboards, I found a pot and started boiling some water. One of them had left out a box of spaghetti and an unopened jar of sauce. It couldn't compare to the meal Tarek made for me, but if he was truly hungry, he wouldn't care. The water was almost boiling when Tarek came in. He'd taken off his work uniform of black pants and a white shirt with Paulo's logo. At Paulo's, even the drivers wore the typical restaurant black and whites, and into sweats and a Hulk t-shirt. Tarek smash? I tilted my head to indicate his shirt. He laughed flatly. Something like that. His arms slid around me from behind and he peered over my shoulder. What are you making? I pointed with the wooden spoon I'd found in a drawer. Didn't want you passing out from hunger. You don't have to do that. He nosed my hair out of the way and pressed his open mouth to the spot where my shoulder met my neck. I shuddered my knees going weak. A moan slipped through my lips. I felt his smile against my skin, which sent another ripple through me. He flicked his tongue over the spot. I cried out, gripping the oven handle so I didn't collapse. He grazed his teeth over my skin, then moved in again with his lips. I held in a sob and instead made a choked, garbled sound. Finally, his mouth moved up to my ear. You like that? No question in his voice. Yes, I breathed. A lot. I was wet enough to take him inside me now. Yes. Good to know. Very good. He licked the edge of my ear, then stepped away. I closed my eyes to steady myself before I did something stupid like stick my hand in the boiling water. A rattling sound made me open them again. He held out the open box of noodles. I took them and started adding them to the water. Go sit down. Find some mindless TV. I'll bring this in when it's done. You're sure? You took care of me when I was overstressed about my paper. Now let me take care of you. His dark eyes twinkled. I'll let you take care of me as many times as you want. I swatted at him with the spoon. Go sit down. Laughing, he flopped onto the couch and started flipping channels. As I stirred the pasta, I snuck glances at him. 
His lean body was mostly reclined, long legs propped on the coffee table. He almost looked relaxed, but I could see the residual tension in his shoulders. He didn't turn on a lamp in the living room, so his face was cast in shadows from the kitchen light. The reflection of the TV danced over his features. He was beautiful, truly the most handsome guy I'd been with. And running my gaze over his body, remembering all the delicious skin hidden under his clothes had me flush with desire. I wanted to know what happened with his brother, but more than that, I wanted him. By the time the noodles were done, He'd settled on Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Like any good geek, I recognized the theme music anywhere. I scooped a generous helping of spaghetti onto a plate, poured on some sauce, and topped it with grated cheese I found in the fridge. Marion was in the middle of her whiskey shot competition when I joined Tarek on the couch. Grinning, he took the plate and started shoveling it into his mouth. Sorry, he said around a mouthful of pasta. I should have better manners, but I'm so bloody hungry, I don't care. Doesn't bother me a bit. I'll focus on Indy until you're done. If I weren't so starved, I might be a little jealous. After he'd polished off half the plate, he set it in his lap and looked at me. Seeing as I'm planning to jump you as soon as I'm full, maybe I should start talking while I finish. Heat suffused my whole body. I'm planning to jump you was far from romantic or even sexy. Yet the offhand way he said it was beyond hot. It was tempting to tell him to forget his story, forget his dinner and take me now. Sure, was all I trusted myself to say. The really short version is I got home today and Cam was in a hypotensive crisis. He stared into his food, his expression back to the tense, pained look he'd worn at the hospital. I took his hand between both of mine. I'm sorry. That must have been terrifying. He shrugged. It was easier this time. I nearly pissed myself the first time. This happens a lot? People our age didn't usually have trouble with high blood pressure. True, I didn't know their exact age, but they had to be roughly 24, like I was. The extended short version is Cam had a kidney transplant in January. Tarek's hand tensed between mine. I laced our fingers together and squeezed. A vague memory of our night together flashed in my head. The scar on his belly. You gave him your kidney. Of course I did. He said it like it never occurred to him not to, which it probably hadn't. Who would make a better match than an identical twin? I couldn't fully understand the bond between siblings, let alone twins, but I could imagine it was enough that they were willing to die for each other. A kidney was probably a no-brainer. He's lucky to have you. I was curious what happened to Cam to necessitate the transplant, but I couldn't ask. This was already more than Cam probably wanted me to know. Yeah, he fucking is, but the wanker doesn't like the blood pressure meds, so he forgets to take them. I give him my bloody kidney and he thanks me by doing his damnedest to ruin that one too. Tarek's voice rose with each word, his face flushed with anger. I felt helpless in the face of his frustration. I squeezed his hand and used my other to rub the back of his neck. Hardly adequate, but what else was there? I was a week away from being a full-fledged social worker, but throw me into a situation where it was someone I had a personal relationship with? and I was useless. Tarek lifted our hands and kissed my knuckles. Thank you. I held in a dry laugh. For what? Being here. He twisted at the waist, turning himself more toward me. Cam is always the one I turn to when I'm going through a rough time, but the past two years... His shoulders sank. I waited for him to go into more details, but he set my hand on his thigh and turned his attention back to his spaghetti. I continued rubbing his shoulders while he ate. If it was enough for him that I was there, listening, then I could do that. Sometimes that was all people needed. Do you want to talk about what happened two years ago? I'm assuming it's related. 
He set his empty plate on the table, then put his elbows on his knees and dropped his face into his hands. I slid behind him on the couch, straddling his hips. With long, firm strokes, I used both hands to rub the straining muscles in his back. It felt good to touch him, and there were a few funny flips in my belly when my groin pressed against his butt. But mostly, I wanted to take away the frustration and fear I heard in his voice. I wanted the twinkle back in his eyes. I could worry about the implications of that later. You don't have to tell me. It's none of my business. But you implied you haven't had someone to talk to. I thought I'd offer, since I'm getting a degree in professional listening. It was a lame joke, but he chuckled. That feels really nice. Although I don't think you could touch me and have it not feel good. Another belly flop. I kind of enjoy touching you too. He moaned, low and soft, his back curled, pressing deeper into my caress. So we weren't talking then. I could do this too. He dropped his hands from his face, letting them dangle loosely between his knees. His shoulders relaxed, his chin tucking to his chest. Each sweep of my hands over his warm shirt spread hunger deeper inside me. Two years ago, in August, I was about to start grad school in architecture. Cam had a job at GE Medical and he'd been dating this girl, Denise. He was crazy about her. Like, a little obsessive. I could tell she was playing him, but he got pissed any time I said something. My hand stilled at his waist. So we were talking. Fair enough. He went out for our mate Franco's birthday. Cam was designated driver. Then they ran into Denise, and she was out with some guy. She wouldn't even talk to him. I guess she was too busy snogging the other guy. Snogging is... I understood most of his British expressions, but that one escaped me. Sorry, um, making out with him. Ouch. That's awful. I couldn't help myself. I slid my hands under the back of his shirt and rubbed small circles at the base of his spine. He hummed his approval. Yeah. Were you there? No, I didn't go. I had a... Um... He glanced back at me, looking almost sheepish. A date? I couldn't hide the amusement in my voice. Yeah. Sorry. You mean you went out with other women almost two years before you met me? You weren't a virgin until the other night? Part of me wanted to thank all the women he'd been with before me. They'd taught him a thing or two that were benefiting me. He laughed. Point taken. It's okay if I still believe that about you, though, right? No other blokes before me. If it gets you through the night? His shoulders shook with another laugh. So I wasn't there. Denise was. Cam got sloshed. Dread crept into my no longer flip-flopping belly. Uh-oh. Ron had the sense to stop drinking when he saw Cam doing shots. A few hours later, Cam was blitzed out of his mind, so Ron and Mike practically carried him to the car. Franco was long gone with some girl. They had Cam's car, which was manual, and Ron didn't know how to drive it. Plus, the car had a tricky clutch. This was going to be bad. Really bad. But Cam was too out of it to warn Ron about the clutch, so they were accelerating up the on-ramp for the highway, and Ron was trying to shift gears and the clutch stuck. And there was a pickup truck behind them. Ron stalled out and the truck smashed into them. My hand stilled on his back. Were they... I couldn't say it. He lifted his head and looked at me over his shoulder. They all lived. Ron had broken ribs and a collapsed lung, but he's fine now. Mike lost a leg, but is doing pretty well. Cam's was the worst. His kidneys. All the pieces dropped into place. Tarek sat up and leaned back, pressing into me without squashing me. He lost one kidney, plus his spleen that night. 
They thought they could save the other one, but over the next year it got worse. It was too damaged to keep up. He took my hand and pulled me around to his lap. He leaned back against the arm of the couch, legs stretched out on the cushions. My knees straddled his hips. We pressed together intimately. Despite our grim conversation, I couldn't stop myself from rubbing against him. He closed his eyes and inhaled deeply. Another low moan rumbled out from deep in his chest. When his eyes opened, they were heavy-lidded and glazed with lust. So, yeah, that's what happened. He stared at my lips as he spoke. I took a year off and gave him a kidney, and why are we still talking about my idiot brother? Chapter 6 I smiled. You are thanking me for being here tonight? Oh, right. He ran his hands up my arms, coming to rest on my shoulders. Yes, thank you. The mood in the room had shifted dramatically. As I ground down on him, I had to think hard to remember why we'd been so tense. Cam, kidney, hospital, sex, now. We should stop talking. I ran my hands over his chest. He needed to lose the shirt. Excellent plan. His mouth covered mine, his tongue sliding inside immediately. He lifted his hips, his erection catching me right where I wanted him. The kiss went from playful to scalding faster than the Batmobile went zero to 90. Too many clothes. I tugged at his shirt and together we got it off. My shirt followed, then my bra. If this is how it ends, he murmured as his mouth dragged along my neck. Maybe Cam should go to the hospital more often. I arched toward his mouth. His lips were doing delicious things to my shoulder, but I wanted them on my breast. This was going to be the result no matter what we did tonight. His tongue trailed lower. Good point. When his mouth found my breast, I cried out. Heat wound through me, wild and burning, centered between my legs where I pressed into him. The needs to savor and to satisfy warred inside me. Mouth never leaving my nipple, Tarek wrapped his arms tightly around me and rose up on his knees. He lowered me to my back, head at the opposite end of the sofa, then came down on top of me. Greedy, my hands roamed his back and shoulders as his tongue flicked pleasure through me. He switched to my other breast, his hand picking up the slack. The double assault of his teeth on one nipple, his fingers pinching the other had my head spinning. I moaned and writhed. I couldn't stand it another second. I wanted him inside me so badly I couldn't breathe. Please, I moaned. I need you. He pulled away and rose above me. His eyes were black shadows staring at me. His chest rose and fell in time with mine, deep, heaving breaths. He smiled that delicious, sexy curl of one side of his mouth that set me on fire. Derek, please. If he wanted me to beg, I would. He sat up and ground his hardness against me. When I moaned, he grinned and did it again. Then he dropped a kiss to my belly button and undid the snap on my jeans. Kneeling on the floor, one of my legs hooked over his shoulder. He lowered my zipper, then slowly slid my jeans and panties down my thighs. As he had the other night, he traced my bat symbol with his tongue. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Yes! His tongue covered me, stroking me from back to front. I squirmed and pressed closer to him. The tip of his tongue flicked my clit, and then he lifted his head to look at me. That faint smile teased the corners of his mouth, but his eyes were intense as they met mine. I wanted to close my lids, lose myself in the pleasure, but I couldn't. 
He had the ability to control me with a look. Gaze never leaving mine, he slowly worked my clothes all the way off. His fingers teased my oversensitive skin, making me writhe. His touch, skimming up the inside of my thighs, spreading me, was almost too much. It tormented and tickled, hovering on the edge of pain. I shuddered. I never felt pleasure so intense. Still looking deep inside me, he took another long, slow lick. My bones dissolved and I sank into the cushions. He set up a devastating rhythm, using his tongue to trace a circle around my clit, then thrusting it inside me. A long lick, and then he finished it off by sucking my clit into his mouth. Over and over, he repeated the pattern, each time driving me higher. But it wasn't quite enough. I hovered on the edge, straining toward a climax that I couldn't quite grasp. It was beautiful, delicious torture, but I couldn't stand another second. Please, I whimpered. My fingers wound into his hair, pulling him closer against me. But that still wasn't enough. He abandoned his pattern, focusing on my clit, the suction twisting everything inside me tighter than I'd known possible. So close. I needed... He lifted his head. I struggled to open my eyes and look down at him. Holy shit, that was sexy. The most beautiful man I'd ever met was between my spread thighs, looking at me like he wanted to devour me. His eyes were glassy with lust and his mouth was slick from me. My fingers tightened in his hair. Damn, you're sexy. A laugh huffed out of him hot air teasing my belly. You look pretty damn sexy yourself. That captivating half smile curled his wet mouth and he watched me as he slid two fingers inside. I moaned, but resisted the urge to drop my head back. I couldn't look away from him. Touch yourself. Play with your nipples. He stroked my G-spot, and my leg involuntarily kicked the cushion. The suggestion was hot, but unnerving. My breast screamed for attention, and his hands were otherwise occupied. But I'd never pleasured myself in front of someone before. Slowly, I released his hair with one hand and drew it up my stomach. I could do this. The intensity in his gaze gave me courage. My hand moved over my ribs and up the swell of my breast. My fingers found my nipple and pinched. I couldn't hold back a moan. It felt so good, combined with his fingers working me from inside. He groaned, then dropped his head. He sucked me into his mouth and flicked my clit with his tongue. He set up a new rhythm of sucks and flicks and strokes, and with my pinches added... It took mere seconds before fire exploded through me, my body shaking with the intensity of the orgasm. He used his mouth to draw every bit of pleasure from me, then kissed his way impatiently up my body. His kiss was rough and tasted like an intriguing mix of him and me. He wrapped his arms around me and scooped me up, still kissing me. My legs wound around his waist and he carried me, a bit unsteady, out of the room. I didn't bother trying to take in the layout of the apartment. All I cared about was his kiss. And despite a mind-blowing orgasm, I wanted more. I wanted him inside me. Needed him. He threw back his sheet and lay me diagonal across the bed. With quick, efficient movements, he stripped out of his pants. Naked, he stood before me as he bent to search through his nightstand drawer. I couldn't wait to touch him, so I sat up and ran my hands down the sides of his thighs. The muscles were tight, his skin smooth and sprinkled with dark hair. He sucked in his breath and handed me the condom. I want you to touch me. His voice was raspy, his accent more pronounced than it had ever been. I couldn't resist a long, slow swipe of my tongue along his length, from base to tip. He said something in Arabic unintelligible but sexy 
Sliding his fingers into my hair, he tugged gently so I would look at him. Staring down at me, he shook his head. You're too good at that. I don't want your mouth tonight. Impossibly, the heat inside me increased. Did you take lessons on the sexiest possible things you could say to women? My fingers struggled to tear open the condom. Seriously, I got the uncooperative one? His stomach quivered with laughter. I'm saying what you make me feel. He smoothed my hair back. I guess you make me say sexy things. Finally, the rapper gave in. I'm okay with that. I traced my finger over his scar, its significance more powerful than it had been Saturday night. But I didn't want to dwell on that. I used my fist to stroke his length, then swirled my thumb over his tip. I couldn't help it. I loved the contrast of soft, pliable skin and thick hardness underneath. He growled in the back of his throat. I smiled up at him through my lashes, then took my time rolling on the condom. When I was done, he practically pounced. Our mouths found each other as he covered me from head to toe. His erection stroked between my lips, the tip poking inside. He laced our fingers together and stretched our arms above my head. He slid inside slowly, then pulled back. The next thrust took him deeper, then another retreat. Deeper again, and back. Three more, and he was as deep inside as he could be. I raised my legs and wrapped them around him, my feet resting on the backs of his thighs. Tangled together like that, we began to move. As desperate as he'd been, he set a slow, steady pace. Each press of his cock inside me was enhanced with the roll of his hips. It caught my clit and my G-spot in one smooth circle. Within minutes, I was begging and sobbing his name. But no matter how I implored him, he wouldn't pick up speed. You're evil, I moaned, pulling his earlobe into my mouth. I bit a little too hard, intentionally. The jerk moaned like he enjoyed it, so I did it again. Maybe, but I am evil in the best way possible. He kissed my shoulder, a wide, wet kiss with lots of tongue. Then he lifted his head and stared down at me. You really want it faster? Please, I whimpered. His smile widened. There was a twinkle there that worried me, but in a good way. In a, this is gonna feel amazing way. Tell me to fuck you. What? I stilled. He stilled. Immediately, my body screamed at me to do whatever it took to get those delicious movements back. Tell me to fuck you hard. Oh, God. The words made my blood feel like fire. My clit was a roaring inferno screaming at me to do it. Fuck me. My voice came out breathless. Tarek groaned and kissed me, but there was no movement down below. He pulled back to look at me again. His jaw was clenched, his shoulders stiff as he held himself up. This was costing him too. Say it again, like you mean it. Fuck me, please, Tarek. Fuck me harder than you've ever fucked me before. And he did. Holy shit, he did. I screamed as the orgasm tore through me. I clutched him as he shook with me, as we clung together. I sobbed his name and he chanted mine. And each time I thought I was near the end, he shuddered again and a fresh wave of pleasure overtook me. Finally, he rolled off me and flopped on his back. Shit. Holy shit. Yeah. I exhaled the word more than said it. How could he talk? I wasn't sure I could recall my full name if asked, let alone speak. I have never tried the whole dirty talk thing, but shit, that's hot. Thank you. Marie. He rolled his head to the side to look at me. What? Yeah, I was super smooth. I was impressed you could talk in complete sentences because I wasn't sure I could remember my middle name. But it's Marie. 
for a long moment, he stared at me, clearly deciding if he should throw out the crazy woman in his bed. Then he burst into laughter, deep, body-shaking guffaws, hoots that made tears form in the corners of his eyes. And after a few awkward moments of watching him, I found myself laughing along. Together we laughed for a solid three or four minutes. Each time one of us started calming down, we'd look at each other and start up again. Murray is a lovely middle name. He finally managed to get out between gasps for air. It's really not. Pretty generic. My lips still twitched, but my own laughter had subsided. He rolled to his side and propped his head in his hand. I loved his comfort with his naked body, how he made no move to cover it with the sheet. It made me more comfortable with my own body. I wasn't overly insecure, but like most women my age, I wasn't suffering an overabundance of confidence where my figure was concerned. My middle name is Camille. Cam's is Tarek. Our parents are not terribly clever. He ran his hand down my arm, then laced our fingers together. That's cute. We lapsed into silence. He toyed with my fingers and I was content to watch. It was past midnight and I was exhausted. My brain didn't have the capacity to focus on something more taxing. So, he finally said. So, I needed to get some sleep. Hopefully he was going that direction. He looked at our hands as he spoke. I understand if you don't want to, but I would really like it if you maybe stayed tonight. I expected my usual panic to take hold. Instead, warmth bloomed in my chest. His nerves were sweet and a little funny. His gaze flicked to mine. Why are you smiling? Grinning, I scooted toward the pillow, answering his invitation. You can order me to tell you to fuck me hard but asking me to sleep here makes you nervous. He slid in beside me and pulled the sheet over us. I guess you have a point. But admit it, you liked that. I snuggled back against him. I shouldn't admit it, but that was the hottest sex I've ever had. I woke around three o'clock, drowsy but interested. But looking at Tarek sleeping so peacefully and remembering the stress etched so deeply into his face the night before, I let him be. He needed rest more than I needed even more sex. I checked my phone, replied to a text from Grace, got a glass of water and slid back into bed. But I couldn't quite fall asleep. What were we doing? I hadn't questioned it when he asked me to meet him at the hospital. But that was a girlfriend thing to do, not a sex fling. He'd acknowledged it was above your pay grade. So maybe he was on the same page as me. I hadn't said I didn't want anything serious, but it wasn't like we were hanging out and going on dates. And the sleeping over thing made it easier to have morning sex, right? Sure, tonight he'd also wanted me there because of the situation with his brother, but in general, this was sex. I liked him, he liked me, and he knew exactly how to turn me on. It didn't have to be anything more than sex. He hadn't actually given an indication he wanted more. I was worrying about nothing. Move along, folks. Nothing to see here. Just Becca overthinking things. It might have been the sun that woke me. More likely, it was the wonderfully hard cock sliding between my thighs. Tarek's mouth pressed to the spot he found last night, where my neck met my shoulder. I groaned as I went from aroused to sopping wet and ready. You're awake, he murmured. His teeth scraped my skin. My breath caught as I squirmed closer to him. Very. Good. He continued working my neck, sending electric tingles through me. I shuddered and squirmed. Granting me no mercy, his hand slid down my belly and cupped me. 
I thrust into his palm as his finger slid inside me. He slid his cock along the crease of my butt as he worked me from the inside. And all the while, his mouth created magic on my neck. I reached back to touch him, sliding my hands over his hot skin at the same lazy pace he used on me. This sex was languid, perfect for morning before we were fully awake for the day. He used his chin to brush my hair out of the way, then set his lips to my earlobe. You feel so good, he whispered. Before I could respond, the first foreboding notes of the Jaws theme cut through the air. I stiffened, his hand and hips stilled. Shit, my dad had impeccable timing. What's that? I untangled myself from Tarek and started for the bedroom door. My dad. My phone was on the coffee table where I'd left it after texting Grace in the middle of the night. Hi, Dad. You're calling early. It's after 7.30. I assumed you'd be on your way to work. My father's stern, slightly nasal voice didn't try to hide his disapproval. I have today off. Never mind that he knew I typically worked at 8.30 and had a 10-minute commute. What's up, Dad? Tarek wandered in looking rumpled and sexy in nothing but gray boxer briefs. They did nothing to hide that he was still fully aroused. I became very aware that I was sitting on his couch, butt ass naked, talking to my father. While the man who'd been about to screw me looked at me like I was the only thing between him and starvation. Every girl's fantasy. Tara gave me that half smile that made my belly flip flop and made me hot and needy farther south. I was gonna leave a wet spot on the couch. I called to see about this little graduation of yours. My father's voice pulled my temperature back down to the normal range. Little graduation, no big deal. Just two years of working my ass off to achieve the goal I'd set when I was a kid. He said it like I'd invited him to have lunch with me at McDonald's. What about it? I pulled my knees to my chest. It was ridiculous how he still had the power to make me feel like a stupid little girl. Kofi? Tarek whispered. I nodded as my dad continued. Are you going to be getting honors? Why? Not worth your time if I don't? But I couldn't say that out loud. I've told you before, they don't do honors in grad school. I don't want to hear excuses, Rebecca. His voice turned mocking. Pain gathered behind my ribs. Sometimes the only reason I didn't hate him was because he was the only family I had. I haven't gotten the final grade on my paper. It didn't matter how many times I told him, dad heard what he wanted to. If I got a high enough GPA, I could tell him it was equivalent to honors. What would honors get me anyway, even if we did have it? I already had the job I wanted. Other than appeasing my dad, which was huge, it was a ridiculous thing to care about. Shouldn't you have that wrapped up by now? It shouldn't come down to one paper. Everything inside me went hard. I told myself the same thing a dozen times, but I'd struggled with my statistics courses. I'd put more effort into them than any other class, but stats wasn't my thing, which is why I never planned to get a PhD. Why am I driving all the way to Milwaukee if you're not even getting honors? Because I've been working for this since I was 11. Because I'm your fucking daughter. And because Kenosha is not that fucking far away. I sucked in several deep breaths before answering. I'm sure I'm being silly. I'll get honors, of course. I faked a confidence I didn't have. Plus the lie. I'd have to practically fail the paper to not get honors. A B plus was hardly failing, but he would think it was. I gave him the rundown on where and when, then got off the phone as soon as possible. I sat staring at the floor, trying to calm my frustration and soothe my hurt feelings. The aroma of coffee lured me out of my pity party and into the kitchen. I felt self-conscious walking around Tarek's apartment naked, but the lazy once-over he gave me made it worth it. His gaze lingered on my tattoo, then slowly made its way to my face. He slid an arm around my waist and drew me to him. Ya Amar. I love it when you talk foreign to me. What are you saying? 
Literally, it translates to like the moon. It basically means you're beautiful. His gaze stayed steady on mine as the blush crept up my chest and into my face. I kissed the ink on his shoulder so I didn't have to keep looking at him. You're not so bad yourself. He handed me a steaming mug of heaven and we took our coffee to the small table in the corner. He pulled my feet onto his lap and absently rubbed my calves as we caffeinated in silence. I loved that he seemingly couldn't be around me without touching me. I'm not going to pry, but if you want to talk about your dad, I'm told I'm a good listener. His half-smile loosened something buried deep inside me. Well, if you ask him, I'm the worst listener in the world, but other than that... I nodded and stared into my coffee, like it would tell me if I should confide in Tarek. It was a girlfriend thing to do, not a sex buddy thing. And yet, he's a hard ass. It got worse after my mom died. He copes by working too hard. He worked such long hours I'd been practically on my own even before mom died. He expects me to work just as hard. He wants to know if I'm getting honors or not. Doesn't want to bother coming to my graduation if I'm not. Damn it. I was not going to cry. Not in front of Tarek and not over something as mundane as my dad being a jerk. Tarek sighed deeply, set down his mug and leaned forward. He took my chin and made me look at him. I'm sorry, your dad's a wanker. If he cannot see what an amazing, smart, hardworking daughter he has, then he's an idiot. His dark eyes were steady on mine. No hint of his usual humor danced there. My stomach flip-flopped, but not in the way he usually made it flip. This spread warmth through me, deep down where I'd been cold for so long. I didn't know how to deal with this feeling, so I went with what I knew. I kissed him. I climbed into his lap, straddling his hips, I stopped worrying about things I didn't understand. Sex, I understood. Afterglow was nice, but I needed to get moving for the day. I couldn't remember the last time I'd stayed in bed until 10. Probably the last time I had the flu. I don't have to be at work until 7. Tarek scratched his belly, drawing my attention to all the smooth skin. Like I hadn't spent the last few hours thoroughly exploring every inch of that skin with my hands and mouth. He stretched. I almost drooled. The fire between my legs was pretty much a constant around him. And it roared back to life like he hadn't given me two fabulous orgasms already this morning. Our kiss in the kitchen had led to having sex with me on the table. Him standing, which left his hands free to touch me everywhere. Then we'd hopped in the shower, and since he wasn't quite up for round two, he'd worked magic with his mouth. Then we'd gone back to his bed so I could return the favor. My hand slid up his chest, moving without my permission. We really needed to get out of bed. He caught my hand and kissed it. My toes curled into his calf. Then he rolled away from me and out of bed. You are entirely too tempting wrapped up in my sheets. As he pulled on his boxers, he tossed a smile over his shoulder. At least one of us had enough control to think rationally. As we dressed, he said, you want to go down to the lake? We could grab some lunch there. Maybe rent a kite or one of those pedal boats. Hanging out, not in bed, having fun together, non-sex fun. I forced myself to keep my breathing even and not give away the panic rising inside me. It's what we'd intended the night before, but somehow a daytime date seemed more intimate. Before I could come up with a suitable answer, my pockets started singing, girls just want to have fun. Earlier, my dad had ruined the moment by calling. Now Grace was rescuing me with her call. Personalized ringtones were so useful. Hang on, it's Grace. I pulled out my phone. What's up? He made parole. A chill slid through me. Are you at home? I can be there in 15 minutes. Yes. Her normally strong, confident voice was timid. My heart broke for her, the way it always did when we had to deal with her dad. 
Why was it so hard for some men to be good fathers? You'll be okay, sweetie. We'll make sure. As I pocketed my phone, I closed my eyes, trying to compose myself before I explained things to Tarek. His hand on my shoulder pulled me out of the dark places in my head. Grace's dad is... Well, he makes my dad look like Prince Charming. He was up for parole, but we were sure he wouldn't get it. And he did. Apparently so. I'm sorry. You dropped everything to come be with me last night. I expect you do no less for your best mate. He smiled. The lake will be there another day. If I ever thought I could handle the emotional implications of having a boyfriend, he was perfect. Good thing I was pretty damn good at keeping feelings deeper than affection out of the equation. He took my hand and led me to the living room. So this graduation of yours, when is it? He couldn't come to graduation. That was way too boyfriendy. Saturday, 1.30. I let go of his hand to find my purse and keys. I work lunch, but I could bring you a congratulatory pizza Saturday night. When I looked up, he was grinning. Cue stomach flip-flop. You don't need to come to my graduation. It's above your pay grade. I recycled his joke from the previous night. Plus, my dad will probably spring for dinner. If he's feeling really generous, he might even take Grace. Grace and I met in seventh grade. We'd bonded over mutual addicted mothers and shitty fathers. But for all his shortcomings, my dad had been a literal lifesaver for Grace. She'd always had a safe place to stay when her dad went on a drunken rage or when one of his customers decided their dealer's teenage daughter was a hot piece of ass. Tarek leaned against the door, blocking my exit. He drew me against him and kissed behind my ear. So when do I get to see you again? Since we've established that our work schedules are opposite for the rest of the week. I let him kiss me. Let the kiss calm the panic swirling inside me. I didn't want to end things with him. I liked Tarek. A lot. But I was getting close to the dangerous territory of too much. And every indication was that he was headed that direction even faster. So I drew away, pasted on my best smile and said, I'll call you. Chapter 7 Mother Nature served up a gorgeous day for graduation. Cloudless, 70s, low humidity, perfect. My dad actually showed up. I got in a B plus on my paper. And while I disagreed with a few places the professor took off points, I wasn't about to argue it. To anyone but dad, it didn't matter. Still, I dreaded talking to him after the ceremony. Like every other graduation I'd been to, it was long and boring. Grace and I texted snarky jokes back and forth the way we had a year ago when she graduated. She also sent a few dirty suggestions of what I should do with Tarek to celebrate. Grace, I bet he'd love for you to be his master. You can work your social skills on him. Me, you're terrible, I roll. Grace, I'm bored and sexually deprived, thus living vicariously. Ever since we dealt with her freak out over her dad's release and come up with a solid safety plan, she'd gone into inappropriate humor mode. It was her preferred coping mechanism around me. With everyone else, she wore her ice queen mask. Lucky me, I got texts that included phrases like motherfucking cocksuckers, best friend perks. It was almost four o'clock before the white men in black robes stopped droning on. The chancellor congratulated us all, the undergrads threw their hats, and it was over. I confirmed our meeting place with Grace as I was herded out with the rest of the crowd. Grace, don't take too long. I've got a nice kielbasa sausage waiting for you. I sincerely hope that was another bad, dirty joke. If she got me an actual sausage, I might have to hurt her. That was too corny, even for Grace. I turned in my god-awful robe and funny hat, then headed outside to find Grace and my dad. We'd agreed to meet by a goofy statue outside the arena. 
I slipped on my sunglasses as soon as I got outside and headed for the statue. Before I spotted Grace or my dad, my eyes fell on Tarek. My stomach and heart flip-flopped, flipped again. My whole body flushed. He was wearing dress pants and a green polo shirt that was a fantastic color for his dark features. He looked positively edible. My legs itched to run to him and throw myself at him. What was he doing here? And why the hell was he talking to my dad? Grace. There was no other explanation. She'd orchestrated this. Despite never getting involved in relationships of her own, she loved to badger me about my insistence that I didn't want a boyfriend. Casual sex was fine for her, but apparently not good enough for me. Tarek looked my way and broke into a grin. His eyes glittered in the sunlight, and even from the distance I could see the appreciation as his gaze moved over me. I'd worn a white sundress with big red flowers. It skimmed my curves without clinging and dipped low without being revealing. I looked good, and I knew it. And to be honest, I'd probably secretly hoped he'd see me at some point tonight. This was not the point I'd hoped for. It did, however, explain Grace's kielbasa text. What are you doing here? I tried to keep the unease out of my voice. I didn't want him to meet my dad. I didn't want anyone to meet my dad. Grace linked her elbow through his. You are going to let him skip your graduation. Unacceptable. Dad looked at me. His face pinched. Even though he wore sunglasses, I knew he was glaring. I didn't realize you had a boyfriend. Is this why you failed to earn honors? Did they all hear the splat of my stomach as it hit the sidewalk? Or did I imagine it? No, Dad, I don't... There was no way to explain it to my dad without either giving him an expose on my sex life or being a bitch to Tarek. Thanks, Grace. You're awesome. You let yourself get distracted by a boy? Dad took a step closer. I've tried to support this choice you've made. He said choice like I was choosing to be a pedophile, not a social worker. All I ever ask is that you work hard and be the best at whatever you do. But instead of honoring my request, you decided to screw around with some boy. I have told you a dozen times, we don't get honors in grad school. It took all my self-control not to yell. Dad held up his hand. I don't listen to excuses, Rebecca. I didn't dare look at Tarek or Grace. If I looked at Grace, I'd cry. And if I looked at Tarek, I'd... I had no idea. Probably cry, too. So I stared at my feet and tried not to puke on my adorable strappy red sandals. I'm sorry, Dad. I didn't even know what I was sorry for. I just knew that was the only thing to say to get him to stop berating me. A lump of tears pushed at the back of my throat. I was such an idiot. Sorry isn't good enough. You failed to get honors as an undergraduate, and now this. He threw up his hands. I don't know why I even bothered. Driving up here was a waste of my time. Pain lanced through me stealing my breath. I wrapped my arms around my waist and continued staring at my feet as his shoes stomped out of my view. No congratulations. No good job. Just gone. I blinked rapidly to hold in the tears. My toenail polish was chipped. I needed a pedicure. Since dinner was clearly a no-go, maybe I could do that tonight. I jumped when someone touched me. Tarek pulled me to his side, arm around my shoulder. Hey, you okay? No, I wasn't fucking okay. Why are you here? I thought he should come, Grace said. Her earlier teasing bravado was gone. I got his number out of your phone. I stepped away from Tarek to face her. Fury rose in me, swift and hot. Why would you think that's a good idea? You know what he's like. I didn't know he'd flip over a guy. She looked mystified. I'm sorry, you never said he was still stuck on that honors crap. But why would you think I wanted him? I tossed my hand toward Tarek. To meet my dad. 
I'm sorry. Grace put on her cool mask. I watched as she shut down and retreated inside herself. The move was so familiar and so scary, I wanted to reach out to her, tell her she didn't have to be ice queen with me. But I was too pissed. This was the only chance I'd had to maybe finally build some sort of bridge to my dad, and she'd blown it. I turned to Tarek. I told you it was pointless for you to come. Above your pay grade, remember? He stared at me, his face blank. I didn't recognize him. I didn't know what to do when he didn't have his thoughts shining through his expression. He was supposed to give me one of his devastating smiles, say he hadn't meant any harm, then take me home and screw my brains out so I could forget. Why wasn't he doing that? I switched shifts with someone. I thought you might want me here. Clearly I was wrong. His voice was so cool. It was like he'd gotten lessons from Grace. I stepped toward him, but his eyes narrowed the slightest bit, and I froze. The smiling, sexy Tarek I knew gave me the confidence to assert myself, but this distant, cold man before me intimidated me. I'll see you. Something flashed in his eyes, one brief flicker of emotion. Then he turned and walked away. After immediately patching things up with Grace, of course it wasn't her fault, we went to dinner and bitched about men. Then we bought two bottles of wine and got wasted at her apartment. She turned on Saturday Night Live and we sprawled on our couch to gorge on bad jokes. I needed to not think for the night. Of course, that wasn't my nature. Alcohol magnified my tendency to perseverate. One of the reasons I so rarely drank Gracie, I'm a bitch. Every time our conversation stopped for more than 30 seconds, my mind went back to Tarek, to that arctic blast of a look he'd given me before he left. Mr. Freeze would have been proud. Of course you are. It's why we get along. She swung her nearly empty wine glass in the direction of her TV. Remember when the show was funny? I need to fix this. She stared at me blinking the slow, deliberate blink of a drunk person trying to comprehend. You want to write for SNL? Okay, I was drunk. She was plastered. No, you moron. Fix my relationship with Tarek. You don't have relationships. She blinked again. It was like talking with a particularly dense owl. Yeah, and why is that? my stupid rule, which was based on nothing more than my own idiocy. Because men are jackholes who aren't worth it, and plenty of them are desperate enough to give you no string sex, and what they won't give you, you can get from your vibrator and your trusty right hand. That's your daddy issue. Our dads had screwed us up pretty good. It's your daddy issue too, she said defensively. I struggled to sit up straighter. The room got spinny, then settled. Exactly. And what has bending over backwards for that asshole gotten me? Grace stared, frowning, as if trying to process my question in her wine-slogged brain. This probably wasn't the best time to have a life-changing revelation. Then again, sometimes it took a bottle of wine to get rid of all the noise and let the honest thoughts out. I probably shouldn't use that philosophy with my addict clients at work, though. It got you a master's degree. She looked into her glass, tossed back the last swallow, then looked back into the glass. I need more. No, you don't. She got up and went to the side table where she kept her wine. My social work degree was his nightmare. I reminded her as she opened a new bottle. You know this. She turned, waving the corkscrew at me. I'm trashed. I know nothing. I'm drunk too, but I'm still sober enough to realize my dad's an asshole and I'm an idiot. Such an utter idiot. I hardly deserve to tell other people how to fix their lives. Tarek is practically perfect. And for some crazy reason, he obviously wants more than just sex from me. And I screwed it up. Grace held up the bottle, tipping it in my direction. She raised her eyebrows in question. I shook my head. 
I was already going to be hurting in the morning. No need to add to the damage. She returned to the couch, cradling her wine to her chest. So call him. Apologize. How grovel. Offer no strings blowjobs for life. I snort laughed. The idea wasn't without appeal. It's late and I'm drunk. If he's asleep, there's your answer. He's not that broken up about it. If he cares even a little, he's still up, probably drinking like us. I looked at the clock on her cable box. 1121. Not that late on a Saturday. My phone sat on the coffee table, suddenly a glaring presence in the room. I grabbed it. Fine. I dialed quickly before I could chicken out. My heart pounded hard enough to dislodge a lung, but I ignored it. Grace was right. I needed to apologize. Probably best to wait on the blowjob offers, though. It's really late. No greeting of any sort. Just Tarek's voice, more guarded than I'd ever heard him. Ouch. I'm sorry, I blurted out. I have daddy issues. I wasn't doing this right, but I didn't know what else to say. Maybe calling tonight was a bad idea. This was what I got for listening to drunk Grace. She nudged my leg with her foot. He's up. She whispered louder than most people spoke. Good sign. Are you drinking? Tarek asked. His tone was admonishing. And underneath, tired. Not, it's late and I need sleep tired. Emotionally tired. Guilt settled heavy in my stomach. Guilt and wine didn't go well together. Guilt, wine, and too many chili cheese fries were downright nauseating. A little? Only most of a bottle of wine? You drunk dialed me? No. Okay. Yes. But really, I am sorry. That's me. Not the wine. I am not doing this right now. He sounded angry. Like he had when he talked about Cam's self-destructive tendencies. Shit. The guilt fries wine concoction in my stomach seesawed. Tarek. I'll talk to you later, Becca. My phone beeped, signaling the call had ended. I pulled my legs to my chest and rested my cheek on my knees. I wasn't going to cry. He said he'd talk to me later. I could still fix it. Maybe. Gracie, I think I really fucked this up. Food. The centuries-old universal medicine for the soul. Weirdly, grocery shopping calmed me. Something about the orderly aisles and endless culinary possibilities soothed me in a way even eating all that food couldn't. That didn't mean, however... I wouldn't be buying at least one jumbo bag of pretzels and two cartons of my buddies Ben and Jerry. After a few gallons of coffee and water, a few million Advil, and a serious, sober discussion with Grace, I was trying to figure out my next move. Now I found myself standing in frozen foods, staring at the pizzas. As I considered the virtues of deluxe versus supreme, a plan started to form in my head pizza had brought us together. I would use pizza to fix things. Given my mood, Tombstone seemed the appropriate brand, so I threw a pepperoni in my cart. I added some chunky monkey and fish food in case the pizza didn't do its job. Even if it did, I still had yummy ice cream. I could dip the pretzels in it. My heart almost popped out of my chest when I got to the checkout. Dark eyes set in a handsome face met mine. One black eyebrow rose. Except those weren't Tarek's sparkling eyes. Those eyes were guarded, weary. I checked the name embroidered on his red polo. Camille. My heart stopped beating hard enough to break a rib, although it still wasn't back to normal. I wasn't exactly in a mood to chat with Tarek's twin. I glanced at the other lanes, but he was the only one open. The smile he gave me was knowing and a little sarcastic. The universe just had to do this to me. I could admit to myself, even to Grace, that I'd been a bitch to Tarek, but that wasn't enough. I was gonna have to eat crow first. 
I gave Cam a fragile smile and started unloading my groceries onto the belt. He didn't say anything as he scanned the food and I purposefully didn't look at him. A low whistle got my attention. I looked at him as he held the pizza. Frozen pizza, that's harsh. I don't need... I stopped myself before I could snap something mean. My shoulders deflated. Does he hate me? Cam laughed, although there wasn't much humor to the sound. Hate? Not even close. I let that sink in, then nodded. Okay. Focused on getting out my debit card, his voice startled me. What I say, he's moping? Not exactly. He didn't look at me as he spoke. His hands made efficient work of bagging my food. He talked like we were discussing coupons or the brewers. What I say, he played a million depressing songs and might find himself murdered in his bed if he plays another Taylor Swift song? It's a distinct possibility. Taylor Swift? Sure, Grace and I had blasted a few of her songs on our way home from buying wine, but I couldn't imagine Tarek listening to her. Would I say he almost spit my head off when I suggested he suck it up and call you? He tilted his head to the side and pointed to his jugular. If you look real close, you can see the bite mark. Overly dramatic, but he'd made his point. Really? Maybe not that last part. You don't say. 4791. I slid my card through the reader and punched in my pen. If he were a chick, he'd have eaten at least three things of Ben and Jerry's. He looked at my bag, at the two pints, and shrugged. Taylor Swift, Ben and Jerry. I fucked this up. You really did. You're really not a very helpful person. That's not my job. I frowned at him. Speaking of job, should you be working? Didn't you just get out of the hospital? He shrugged again. He likes shrugging. Probably not. Doc says I shouldn't, but landlord likes getting paid, so... Are you taking your meds, at least? Are you my mom? No, I just... I had no standing here whatsoever. Still, I didn't like seeing Tarek so worried about you. I'll make you a deal. You go talk to my brother. If you patch things up, you have regained the right to care about his emotional state. Then you can join the Get On Cam's case about his meds club. Sound good? He held out his hand. Cautiously, I took it. We shook. Tarek's brother had some serious issues about his health situation. The newly minted social worker in me was itching to delve further. Is he even home? I promise. He has the day off and he's not going anywhere. Go over there. He handed me my bag. I work until 10, and I'm going out after. I cannot take any more fucking Taylor Swift. And if you guys work things out, well, I want no part of you screwing like bunnies. Heat flashed up my face. Cam rolled his eyes. Like I don't know that's what you guys do. I took out the trash. The heat deepened. Go. If you get Taylor Swift out of my apartment, I will be indebted to you forever. Chapter 8 It was a silly plan. Corny. Goofy. Ridiculous. But the only one I could think of. I set the pizza box on the floor in front of his apartment. I'd baked the tombstone and put it in one of the many Paulo's boxes I had. I peeked inside to make sure my note was still in place, then knocked before I could chicken out. I stepped to the side so he'd only see the pizza box when he answered. For long, agonizing seconds, there was no sound from inside. What if Cam had been wrong and Tarek did go out? What if he'd picked up a shift at work? Worse, what if Cam called to warn Tarek and he wasn't answering on purpose? The flip-flop flip in my stomach was decidedly unpleasant. Finally, I heard shuffling inside. The doorknob rattled, then the door yanked open. Tarek stepped forward and his foot hit the box. Standing where I was, I could see the side of his face as he frowned, then bent to pick it up. He was wearing black athletic shorts, riding low on his hips, and no shirt. My mouth watered. 
I could see that gorgeous line at his hip, the one I'd run my tongue over and over the other day. Now my tongue flicked the backs of my teeth, anxious to repeat the move. Expression unchanging, Tarek opened the box and looked inside. A moment later, he closed it and turned his head. Our eyes met. I tried to put all my regret into my expression. Hi. His face still gave away nothing of his thoughts. Hi. I took a step forward, my insides turning to chaos. Slowly, his expression shifted. His face softened, and his eyes got that hungry spark. He grabbed my hand and pulled me into the apartment. The pizza hit the floor. The door slammed shut and his arms wrapped around me. Our mouths met in a desperate kiss, fighting to possess the other, tongues winding together. He held me so tight I could barely breathe, but I didn't care because the kiss left me breathless anyway. And it still wasn't close enough. I would never be close enough to him. Finally, he broke away and buried his face in my hair. He didn't say anything, just held me tight, his hands stroking the ends of my hair. It sent tingles down my back. I held him just as tightly, my cheek pressed to his bare chest. His skin felt good under my hands. It felt right. We felt right. I'm sorry, I whispered, my voice choked. Damn it, I was not going to cry. He breathed in, slow and deep. It's okay. He kissed my temple, then led me to the couch, picking up the pizza on the way. He set it on the coffee table and opened the lid. You hungry? Should I get plates or was this just a prop? He gave me that half smile I was falling for. And I knew everything would be okay. It would be good, even. Really good. I'm starving. I'll get plates. He returned with two mismatched plastic plates and sat next to me. Close enough, our thighs pressed together. It had only been a day since my idiotic explosion, and only four days since I'd been naked with him. But the stress of the past few days made it seem like weeks. It felt so good to touch him. I wanted to climb in his lap and kiss him. I wanted to take him inside me and have him stay there all night. And tomorrow, I wanted to start again from the beginning. I wanted to spend time with him with our clothes on. A novel concept. We each polished off a piece of the pizza, not talking, just sitting shoulder to shoulder, hip to hip, knee to knee. Instead of following his lead and reaching for another piece, I turned toward him. Were you really playing tons of Taylor Swift? He frowned at me, as if I'd asked if he planned to cut off a finger. What? I saw Cam at the store. He said he was ready to kill you in your sleep because you were blasting Taylor Swift. And I can see from your expression that he was full of shit. He does that, doesn't he? It fit the picture I had forming of Tarek's twin. Cam is routinely full of shit, Tarek confirmed. I would say 87% of the time. Approximately 4% of the time he's not sure, and the remaining 9 he's actually sincere. I shook my head, smiling. You guys are very different. We are a case study in nature versus nurture. So no Taylor Swift then? I was upset about our fight. It didn't turn me into a 14-year-old girl. That startled a laugh out of me. Right. I might have moped around a little, and I might have snapped at him a few times but I definitely didn't eat an entire carton of ice cream no matter what he says. He smiled charmingly around a bite of pizza. My chest swelled. I really am sorry. All that shit with my dad. I flopped back against the couch cushions and draped my arm over my eyes. They had a thick, squishy couch that could swallow a person. It goes back a long time, like my whole life. It had nothing to do with you. I wanted to yell at him, but he left. You and Grace didn't. He ran his hand up my thigh, then back to my knee. I know. Promise you won't do it again, and I will forget it. I didn't say anything. 
and instead pulled in a fortifying breath for courage. I wanted this. I could do this. I lowered my arm and looked him in the face. I promise. He squeezed my knee. Good. So we're good then? Something still seemed off, like I'd said the wrong thing. Yeah, we're good. He removed his hand to pick up his pizza. My stomach did one of the bad flips. I sat up and put my hand on his back. All that warm, wonderful skin. I wanted to touch it forever. You don't seem like we're good. He studied the last bite of his crust, then set it on his plate, which he put on the table. He scrubbed his hands over his face, then turned to me. That first morning we were together. Last weekend, you remember I got ticked when I thought you were dismissing me as some boy toy. Yeah, I said cautiously. I didn't want to screw this up. You did the same thing yesterday. I did. His eyes narrowed and I stopped. You're right. I did. When I said that about being above your pay grade, that was me trying to make it less awkward that I was asking you to come to the hospital. But it stung when you threw that back at me. I felt as tiny as one of the pizza crumbs. I'm so sorry. I lifted my hand to touch his face, but stopped midair, uncertain. He grabbed my hand, kissed my palm, and folded it between his. He watched me expectantly. I swallowed back the familiar panic. I owed him this much. I told you my mom died when I was 11. What I didn't tell you was, well, everything else. That it was almost a relief when she died. His expression turned stricken. Was she sick? Right. Something like cancer would have been a breeze compared to mom's troubles. Not the way most people define sick. But yes, she was bipolar and she frequently self-medicated with alcohol and prescription pain pills. What you refer to as dual diagnosis. I nodded. It sometimes feels cliche, but that's why I was drawn to the field. The only person who made any progress with mom was a social worker she saw for a while at a treatment center. She was clean for seven months and stayed on her meds. That was the longest she ever lasted. He slid his arm around me, pulled me to him and kissed my forehead. I let myself lean on him for a moment. His simple affection gave me the courage I needed to tell him the rest. I got home from school one day, right near the end of fifth grade. She'd been going through a good period, medicated and clean for over two months. Maybe dad and I got less vigilant about the signs. I don't know. I question it more than I should. I know he blames himself, although he'd never admit it. Anyway, I went into her room to tell her I was home and my voice broke off. No matter how many years passed, the memory of my mom with her face in her own vomit staring lifelessly at her half-digested food, would never dim. Tarek wiped a tear off my cheek. Look at that. I was crying. I called 911, but she'd been dead for a couple hours. And if it hadn't been that day, it would have been another time. I'm still not sure if she OD'd on accident or on purpose. He pulled me to his chest, a little roughly, and held me tight. His lips pressed into my hair. I'm so sorry. I complain about Cam and sometimes my parents, but I know I'm lucky. I wish you had not gone through all that. I kissed his shoulder and pulled back to look at him. Don't ever feel sorry that you have a good family. Promise me? Never. After she died, Dad's controlling tendency got worse. He buried himself in work and expected the same of me. He always thought if mom had just tried harder, she could get over her bipolar disorder and stop using. I rolled my eyes. It's one of the reasons he thinks social work is a bad career choice. He thinks I'm coddling people who need to shape up. I said the last words in a mocking imitation of him. I'd spent more than half my life trying to work hard enough to get his approval. And you know what I realized last night after drinking almost a bottle of wine? Tarek winced. A bottle? Grace might have had my last few sips. 
Well, I'm glad you two patched things up. I've known her since we were 13. We'll always patch things up. What did the wine help you realize? The corner of his mouth twitched. I've been wasting my time trying to please him. Obviously, it's never going to be enough. He loves me, but he'll never be proud of me. Tarek opened his mouth like he was going to say something, but I held up my hand. It doesn't matter. I'm happy with my accomplishments. I'm proud of me. That's what matters. I nodded firmly, confirming this not only to Tarek, but to myself. To hell with my dad. I was awesome. Maybe someday he'd realize that. But I was done sending him messages and neon lights. For what it's worth, I'm proud of you. A riot of flip-flops. All the good kind. It's worth a lot. Flippy, floppy, flip, flop, flip. I slid my leg over his and straddled his hips. His smile widened into a grin as his eye got that hungry spark. Thing is, I've never really had a boyfriend. Like one where we don't just have sex, but we're friends too. You know, go out, do stuff, hang out. He slid his hands up and down my back. I see. I couldn't help rocking my hips into him. I worked so hard at school and pleasing my dad, I didn't put much effort into my personal life. And it's not like I have a clue what a functional relationship looks like. But now that I've got the degree and the job, maybe it's time for a new focus. I see no flaws in your logic. I took a deep breath. This was scarier to say than professing love probably was for most people. I like you. A lot. Last night when I thought I'd blown it, I wasn't upset that I'd be missing out on the sex. Well, okay, I was, but not just the sex. I hated the idea that I wouldn't get to see you, or talk to you, or go down to the lake and go pedal boating with you. He worked his hands under the hem of my shirt. I'd washed and worn back curl for him and his thumbs teased my belly button. It tickled and aroused all in one, and I sucked in my breath. You didn't blow it, I promise. If anyone is getting blown here, it... I pressed my mouth to his, cutting off his terrible joke. He laughed into me as his tongue slid over mine and his arms wrapped tightly around me. A few dizzying minutes later, I was topless and on my back with Tarek a delicious weight above me. We pressed together intimately, hips rocking, practicing for the real deal. Heavy lidded, he looked into my eyes as he rolled my nipples between his fingers. As always, I wanted to close my eyes and get lost in the pleasure, but I couldn't look away from him. How about we make this official? He dropped a kiss to my jaw as his hand moved down my body, my belly trembled as he got closer to the waistband of my yoga pants. Not exactly sexy, but all my jeans were dirty. Batgirl had been my attempt at seductive. Make what official? Instead of answering, he got up and pulled off my remaining clothes. His shorts hit the floor, and from some hidden place he produced a condom. It was on in five seconds, then he again covered me. My legs spread instinctively and he slid inside. We both moaned, then he kissed me, long and slow, like his thrusts. When he reached the hilt, he lifted his head and looked at me with glassy eyes. I don't want to be your fuck buddy. I want to be a boyfriend. He withdrew, angling his hips to catch my G-spot. I couldn't speak. The pleasure was too intense. Pleasure driven not only by what he was doing to me, but by how he made me feel. Deep emotion. Something that had always been absent from sex before. Damn, it was heady stuff. I wrapped my legs around him and pulled him back to me. I want to be your girlfriend. He stilled, his eyes locked on mine. For a long time, Heavy moment, we looked inside each other, unspoken feelings passing between us. I didn't fully know what I was telling him. 
I only knew the way my chest swelled added to the enjoyment of our joined bodies. Finally, he started moving, slowly driving us both insane. When it was over and we got our wits back, he held me close as we watched Batman Returns. And we finished the pizza.